Hello, folks. Hey, Bear. Hey, Bear. Welcome hey, Bear. to the Nate Land <laughs> Podcast. Right now, you can get big discounts on all fire pits during Solo Stove's Labor Day sale. Use promo code Nate at solostove.com for an extra $10 off. That is solostove.com. Promo code Nate for $10 off on top of their incredible Labor Day discounts. Hurry, Labor Day sale ends September 11th. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Nate. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Nate at sign up for and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. When you shop on Vroom.com, you never have to haggle or negotiate the price of a car. When you sell your car on Vroom, you get a price instantly, so you don't have to waste time at a dealership or deal with weird buyers. Vroom is entirely online. When you need to buy a car, just grab your phone, go to Vroom.com, check out thousands of great cars. That's Vroom.com. Life is busy and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop. They are giving away a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Factor is the perfect mealtime solution for an on-the-go lifestyle or any lifestyle, really. Their fresh, never-frozen meals are delivered ready to heat and eat in two minutes, or right away if you eat it cold. So I can fuel up fast and get on with my day. <coughs> Head to go.factor75.com slash dollop130 and use code dollop130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That's code dollop130 D O L L O P 130 at go.factor75.com slash dollop 130 for $130 off. <laughs> you all right? Uh, welcome to the Nate Land podcast. I'm Nate, sitting here with uh, uh, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, Dusty Slate. All right. We tried. That was, a, that was the new hello, folks, and y'all say, hey, Bear. I was into it. We didn't say it at the same time, but. Yeah. It'll get better. <laughs> I think it's got to be the response, you know. Right, right. Where does uh, Let's Go Folks stand now? I don't know. It's been gone, man. It's out? <laughs> no, I still think Let's Go Folks still. People still say it. I think it's still fun one to say. Hey Bear is just, it is the, you say hello, folks. Someone says, hey, Bear, back. Like, that's so obvious. So mm -hmm. A guy got mad at me this weekend. He did, uh, hey, Bear, middle of a joke. Mm -hmm. And then I, I said, hey, Bear, back to him. And then... The whole audience was quiet, and I go, wow, you really killed the energy of the show. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you ruined the whole show. And I was being funny with it, uh, because I always say the show's ruined or things are going wrong. I mean, I, yeah. half my act is saying it's not going yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then he sat there for a long time, and then he left. Like, I mean, like, he left on, like, the last 15 minutes. And then I made jokes about him leaving, and then he came up to me in the merch line, and he said he got so upset with me. And uh, we talked. We talked it out, and it was yeah. fine. But, uh, you know, he was so mad. I don't know what happened. Did you say, hey, Bear, when he left? <laughs> <laughs> no, as he walks off, you go, hey, Bear. Clearly he had, That's enough, Dusty. <laughs> clearly he had never been to one of my shows before, where yeah. I'm just talking about, hey, well, all right, the show's tanked. I mean, yeah. I say that sort of stuff all the time. Yeah. But, well, I mean, we made up, but right. it took a minute. That's good. I had somebody yell, let's go, folks, this weekend. I replied, hey, Bear, and it was clear they haven't listened to me in the last 10 episodes or yeah. so because they just stared at me like, what? Yeah. So there's, you can tell the people who aren't quite up to date when, uh, when they have no idea what hey, Bear means. Yeah. Hey, well, they 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 get on board once they get there. Let's yeah. go, folks, still good, though. People, people say, like, when I walk out, that's what they're usually the appropriate time to yell. Is yeah. When people do You just kind of. Yell it when you walk out. Let's go, folks. Hey, Bear. Hello, folks. Everybody, you know, identifies whatever, yeah. whichever slogan you want. We have Hey, Bear shirt. Kevin Best made yeah. for us. I got a real list of things now. I go out, all right, we're having a good time. Yeah. Hey, Bear. Hello, folks. Yeah. Let's go, folks. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> yeah. 
They have people that show up late. They're like, what'd you miss? You're like, just his introduction. <laughs> yeah. he, he's just, Twenty minutes late. Yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah. He's got a laundry list. He, <laughs> he sits up there. <laughs> Pesticide. I had a guy other stuff. Tulsa, Oklahoma, a couple weekends ago. He came up to me after the show. He said, "You said you're from Nashville." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "You ever meet Nate Bargetsy?" I said, "I've run into him." Yeah, he goes. You ever try to get on his podcast? Oh, oh wow! I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I listen all the time, dude. That's what he told me. Really? Yeah. I guess he'd never watched it. Oh, <laughs> and he just listened to it. He's like, you could be on there, dude. Yeah. I was like, thanks, man. I'll, you sound yeah. like a guy on there. I'll look into it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I don't think you should be on it, but. <laughs> Somebody told me I should start a podcast, and I didn't want to tell them that I have two going right now because yeah. I'm like, if you don't know that that's happening, what's your other one? Well, I have a "We're Having a Good Time" podcast. Oh yeah, you know where I just talk. Yeah, and uh, but they were like, you should do a podcast, and it's like they were such fans. But I'm like, you know, you know, maybe clicked on the link in my bio and <laughs> see that I have two going. Yeah, it's it's you know it's that's the it's hard people it's you know you realize I always try to think of when someone doesn't know you know they'll be like when are you coming to this town and then you're like I'm here you know now which happens a lot and or they don't know that you're on a pod they don't know what show you know and then I think about I'll try to be like all right well I'll think of a music person I'm like yeah I don't know exactly I could walk up to Stevie Wonder and you know be like why don't you go on uh Fallon. And he's like, what? He's like, I was on Johnny Carson's first show. And you're like, yeah. oh. Well, I didn't see it. So, you know, and then I'm like, I would do the same thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We start off with you guys' comments. Uh, again, they're all Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, reviews, face, Facebook, right, too? Yeah, we'll get yeah, Facebook. We'll get some Facebook. We get some Facebook. Uh, Peggy Carp. This is a terrific episode. The discussion on the Taylor Swift class widened to a great discussion on genuine creativity versus Im- imitations. Nate's comments were, as usual, right on, as were Dusty's. You guys are a breath of fresh air. Thanks f- to all of you for brightening my week. You are good company. Oh, man. It's very nice. I guess me and Brian dropped the ball, huh? <laughs> Nate I mean, and Dusty she, hit the nail on the head. She might not know y'all are even on the podcast. <laughs> she lives in Tulsa. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Gray. I think I laughed harder than any other moment in the show hearing about bromine being worried about getting surprise branded in the Q Dogs. I almost crashed my lawnmower. Thanks for the great show. Keep up the good works. Good work, yeah. boys. Keep up the good work, boys. How did I just forget boys? <laughs> you got tired. I got tired. Keep up the good works. You guys get it. He was saying <laughs> boys also. Uh, Maverick Pitchford. I have waited for this day for so long. I thought when my comment was finally read on the podcast, it would be a joyous occasion. But boy, was I wrong. My last name is Pitchford, not Pitchfork. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, Nate. I don't blame you. I blame Brittle Bates. Yeah, sorry about that, Maverick. <laughs> you put the pitchfork in I there. I think with a name like Maverick, I just assumed it yeah. was Pitchfork. Pitchford is a tough name. Yeah, Maverick Pitchford. I bet it's Pitchford. 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 Oh, yeah. Pitchford. <laughs> Maverick Pitchford. Yeah. No, it's Pitchford. It's Pitchford. Pitchford. Nah. Pitchford. Pitchford. Maverick yeah, you're probably Pitchford. Right. Pitchford. Yeah, that's good. Great Call name. Mav. Uh, Tanner Baldridge, Nate, when he hears about a class analyzing lyrics to Taylor Swift songs, I could pass that in a heartbeat. Also, Nate, five minutes later, when I listen to music, I don't hear the words. <laughs> I guess if they talked about the words, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think I mean, a song does not even remotely. Abigail was telling me about uh Lumineers like in their albums and I like the Lumineers like it's the whole album's like a story and I'm like what like I don't even know what that means like I there's I've never listened to a song and and really was like this song's about the, like it's I'm Kenny saying Chesney's back where I come from Yeah but he just cuz he says I come from Tennessee that's the only part that's I'm like <laughs> and it goes, I'm just an old Tennessean, and I go, I am too. You just pick out the word Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't know what it's, 
all about. But you've talked about how it, what it meant to you. Because it meant to me because I, I would listen from. Yes, it, that song meant something to me because I would listen to it as I as I handed out flyers because they reminded me of Tennessee. But it was, but I don't know. I didn't like. Yeah. I don't. I just. I don't digest music. I guess the way people do. I mean, we used to. Me and my buddies used to listen to Pink Floyd. Like we would break it down like it was our life. I yeah, mean, we got too into it. Yeah, I don't even think I could even would even I would leave probably. <laughs> yeah, we got deep yeah. into it. Yeah, we're sitting in a trailer getting deep into it. Yeah, I, I understand. That. Yeah, y- y'all have a good night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would be like, I don't, I don't. What are we doing? The first time I was in New York City, I remember I texted Dusty. I was like, I'm just not comfortable here, and he sent me this song, Hank Williams Jr. song. What's the song? Dixie on my mind. Yeah, I think. Dixie on my mind. Where yeah. it talks about that exact predicament. Yeah. Of being in New York City from the South and not being comfortable there. Oh. And I still vibe to that every it's, now and then. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I like New York City. You were just City, there visiting? Love... Yeah, I was uh, there. <laughs> you had a text a friend? You go. I don't feel You're safe. You're like, golly, I got to lay over in New York and I just don't feel comfortable. And he goes, all right, man. <laughs> he knew who he to goes, contact. Uh, no, he goes, well, I'll tell you what to do. Uh, download. <laughs> yeah, he knew who to contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he like, goes, yeah, I'll help you get through that. He goes, what, you got an hour and a half later or something? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like, Ugh. No. <laughs> like, you know. I wasn't like, <gasps> uh, yeah. I was, I was in the corner like, first and first. I was yeah. just like, man, this is a different thing. Yeah. It's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. I think Hank Williams Jr. played that song once in New York City. Oh, and, uh, how'd they take it? I, I, I think the host was like, something like, all right, you're playing that here in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. That was great, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the host of the show? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, like you about most songs, though. I was just thinking about Hotel California. I have no idea what that song means. Yeah, about about a hotel. it's about hell, isn't it? I have no idea. I thought it'd be about a hotel <laughs> in California. It's nothing to do with a hotel. I think it's a metaphor for hell. You check in here, you can never leave. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would never. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad because I think these songwriters are like, there's, a, there's, there's a story. There's like something there. They're putting their soul. They're into putting it. their soul into it, and I'm just, you know, like beep bop beep bop <laughs> bop bop. You know, I just like, I and none of it means anything. <laughs> Shake it off. And I'll even listen to... Shake it off. Like, I'll listen to uh, Led Zeppelin. Like, I've started listening to, like, some... like, And I like that stuff, but it's still, like, I'm not doing it for the right reasons. It's not like... Don't fear the reaper? Yeah. You know, I don't, you know, listen to that on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Hotel California. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell, and I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven or this could be hell. Then she lit up a candle and she showed me the way. There were voices down the corridor. I thought I heard them say. I mean, I know all the lyrics, but I've never really thought about yeah. what it means. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I mean, it could just be But when be you about hear a California song, you listen fame. to it like a story? Mm-hmm. Depends on what it is. Yeah. Sometimes you can tell, oh, he's trying to, let's rewind it. Yeah, he's trying to tell us something. Let's sink in. Let's listen to this. Mm-hmm. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten way too into song lyrics before, and then I like started to meet and get to know musicians, and I'm like, yeah, this maybe doesn't mean anything. Yeah, like that John Connolly song I asked you about. Oh well, um, that one means something. She, yeah, yeah, it does <laughs> yeah. mean. And you asked him about it, right? But yeah, she can't say that anymore as a song. It's like a cheating song. But Brian thought that at the end that uh, the guy kills the woman. Mm-hmm. And I asked John Connolly, and he laughed. He said, "No, I don't think, I don't think anybody's killing anybody." In this song. <laughs> it's a fifty-year-old song. No yeah. one's ever asked me that. Yeah, yeah, he said, "No one's ever asked me that before." Yeah. Well, there's a guy named Brian tell, Bates who. You're like John. Do you have, do you have someone get murdered in your family? <laughs> yeah. <There's> what <laughs> from that song? All right. Uh, Tanner Bald. No, just did that. <laughs> Brianna Shock. But Brianna was shocked I didn't mess up that first name. <laughs> mm-hmm. To be fair to Pastor Dusty, slew is used as the past tense of slay in the King James Version of the Bible. Oh, well, there you go. That's you where go. I got it. Yeah. There you go. That's All what right. you're thinking of. You're thinking of Genesis 4, 8? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's where he lives in the King James Version. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Alexandra Schnittiger. Mm-hmm. I actually took an Adam Sandler class in college like a regular college kent state in a regular major oh wait i actually took an adam sandler class in college like at a regular college she went to kent state 
uh, in a regular major communication that counted towards my degree. Every day we watched an Adam Sandler video and learned about his comedic techniques. Best part of the class is Adam Sandler sending a video to our class just for us. He said, hope this class is an easy A. I got a B, but it was a cool experience. There you go. That's well, awesome. That's fun. All, yeah, all Adam Sandler's movies are like the hero's journey. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it is, it's like that same formula. Everyone is like, you know, guy not doing well, accomplishes something, then has a big failure, and then wins in the end. Yeah. See, I have not no depth. some of his recent stuff. Is no. that, I have no depth to anything, even movies. Like, there's no, I even try to go like, all right, Nate, think about, <laughs> like, what is this person do you know and i have there's no it's like i just like I, I laugh at the parts that i laugh at i enjoy watching it what did i you know and then other than that you're like i can't i don't follow along i think you're selling yourself short though i mean yeah. you tell stories in your act you know what makes a good story you know how to structure ideas yeah and i bet you appreciate those things in movies even when you don't realize it or yeah. sitcoms and nunners why is like business school your favorite episode of The Office? Because it, yeah, because it had heart, yeah, to it. Sweet, <laughs> it's sweet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. What, I guess. Yeah, I guess. So. What about this with Adam Sandler movies? You ever notice this though? In in several of the movies, like the first one, Billy Madison, he has Veronica Vaughn is the love interest. Two V's. The, uh, <laughs> Happy Gilmore, it's Victoria Vennett. Two V's. Little Nicky, I forget the name, but it's two V's. And then uh, Waterboy, it's Vicky Valancourt, two Vs. And I think there's some others. Uh, so what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? What does that mean? What is the two Vs yeah. all about? What are the two Vs about? Yeah. yeah. Why does he keep doing that? Yeah. When you find out, maybe he'll write in. I'm hoping so. Let's get an easy send A. Send a video to this class to be like, yeah, that means it just worked out that way. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, I mm. never see anybody talk about the two days. Mm. 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 You just figured that out yourself. Yeah. Right. What were you? What was happening in that moment? <laughs> well, I just think that I just kept. You know, you think about the because he's like in Waterboy, he says Vicky Valancourt a lot, and yeah. then in Billy Madison, they say Veronica Vaughn a lot. Mm -hmm. That Veronica Vaughn. Yeah. yeah you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you just hear it a bunch. But do you remember like the moment you thought of this? I don't know if I remember the moment. Yeah. I've been talking about it for a while. Okay. No one seems to know. Or it never really goes past this kind of conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Where people go, well, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I like the idea of you when you learn it. You go, huh. You're watching Waterboy. You're like, huh. Wait a second. Wait a second. We were watching uh, Everybody Loves Raymond and notice how much purple like was in on the set. And I'm like, it must have been his favorite color. And it was just everywhere. And I Googled, like, everybody loves Raymond, purple, couldn't find anything, just kept, I can't, I was like, I can't believe anyone's not, never talked about this. Turns out our TV's color just wasn't corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Every show started having purple. Yeah. And I was like, it must be a sitcom thing. Like, it's yeah. pleasant to the eye. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, I wish you had done, like, TikTok conspiracy. That's, I mean, I would have almost, if you wouldn't have looked it up, I could almost been, we could have got to the bottom of it. <laughs> you could I have was reached ready. out to him? I could have reached out to him and then been like, you know, stupid. I would have, you know, <laughs> hey, why is the, per I, I mean, I know Phil, I know Ray and Phil, but like, uh, Patricia and Patricia. Yeah. So like, I mean, I could have got you all the, <laughs> I would have texted them all together. Hey guys, why, what was the deal with the purple? Because <laughs> I would have probably, if you didn't figure it out, yeah. I would have just been like, I don't know, let's find out yeah and then it would have just been he'd be like what are you talking about like, i don't know uh ben hobrach hobrach mm. uh, yeah. the government can cancel debt because they own the debt the debt is federal student loans medical debt is not there are no federal medical loans the credit card companies would have to cancel those debts mm. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Apt analysis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Uh, Susan Johnson. I've worked in financial aid for over 20 years. The college is a choice argument gets real tough when you look at the amount of jobs requiring degrees. 
Instead of going into these those arguments, I'll share a fun fact. There was a Mr. Pell, Senator Pell from Rhode Island. Since he died in 2009, I wouldn't recommend calling him for the grant. Oh, yeah. Well, well that might be a Senator Pell Jr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah, him I'm on hoping the, the Pell more. family's keeping it going. Yeah, I would hope so. I got a Pell Junior grant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a smaller grant, Maybe less but, money. Yeah. yeah. By the way, that's my favorite way to correct us on anything. Look, there's a lot of stuff I could say. Yeah, but I'll say something else. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll just share a fun fact. <laughs> I'm not here for this stuff. For the yeah, she makes sense. The jobs, so we're blaming. I would blame the jobs. There. I mean, yeah. I yeah if everyone going. stopped going to college, yeah. those jobs would be like, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We yeah. just want. Can you drive a stick shift? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. You go. All right. I got a job at Dell. Uh, <laughs> but we want our doctors, I think, to go to college, right? Huh? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Care. The guy who drives stick shift. Yeah. <laughs> can that you takes get to a lot work? Of stuff. You know. He yeah. knows how to move some stuff. He knows how to. Yeah. <laughs> He goes, uh, I'd like to see you move this bed upstairs. All right, I'll let you have surgery on me. <laughs> he goes, that was good. Wood cabinet, no one, no dents. He goes, oh, a couple of doctors have to tear wood cabinet up. And you go, yeah. All right. Yeah, let me show you, see you do a crochet pattern. Yeah. And then you can do surgery on me. Yeah. All right, let's get after it. Yeah. <laughs> David Brothers. I went from having no high school degree in my early 30s to two master's degrees at the age of 40. I can say the degrees paid off big time in both my personal and professional life. Everyone has their own experience, but I can say it was totally worth it for me. Very true. Yeah, don't. Yeah, go do your thing. Yeah, good job. Yeah, don't listen to this. If anybody's young, could probably go to college. Do whatever. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're like... even older. If you're sitting old. around trying to make a choice. If you're old like David... <laughs> And you make a choice based hey, off young, a podcast. You, yeah. you got to get it together. David younger than me. If you're an old man like David Brothers, <laughs> who Bates used to drop off at school, <laughs> know, the Brothers family. <laughs> Renee Mathis, Dusty's right. School kids take the SAT, but it's not the college admission scholastic aptitude test. It's the Stanford achievement test. Yeah, you can see how that could be confusing. Maybe yeah. let's give it another name. There's a lot of letters. A lot of letters. That's why they go SAT. I'm yeah. I'm going to take the SAT. And if you say, I'm going to, I got to go take the SAT, they go, well, how about you not worry about it? <laughs> right. That's how they. Yeah, because I'm like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've go. got our answer. Let's that even say, took me yeah. a second to get. Yeah. <laughs> scholistic. Scholistic. So, well, how do you say it? Skull, scholastic. 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 Yeah, you got to do the whole thing. I wouldn't be That's it, how yeah. you really get get Scholastic up. aptitude. If they just said, what does aptitude mean? I'd go, I don't. And they'd be like, all right, next. You remember the Scholastic Book Fair? Any of y'all have that yeah, going? Yeah, I love yeah. the, the book fair. The book fair was fun, dude. The yeah. book fair was super fun. I'd buy some erasers. Harbor, I went to Harper's Book Fair. They're uh, still going? Yeah, they're still doing them. I mean, I think it was, I want to say kindergarten. And I, mean, I went in and I was like, this is, <laughs> I love the book fair. And, uh, book fair is fun. Book fair is fun. And so I went in there and did it with her. And I was like, we get to get, you know, I wanted to get everything. I get a book, an eraser, and then like a poster of a car. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the best. Yeah. Everything you need. Uh, My poor mom had no money and knew I wasn't going to read those books, <laughs> yeah. but would buy them for me anyway. Berenstein Bears. Yeah. That's she's what like, I would read. Buying me books that maybe she'll read so that they at least get some use out of it. <laughs> she's got to read My Teacher is an Alien because I won't read it. Yeah. That was a book you read? Oh well, I I did end up reading that. Led that down one. the road to where yeah. we're at right now. <laughs> that could have been. That yeah. could have been. There was yeah. several. You know, it was. I read my teacher as an alien. You took the ball, the book, the wrong way. You yeah. walked in and you're like, huh? Yeah. You, how come you can always see me when your head's not looking at me? Really opened up some teachers as an alien. Yeah. 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 What is that book about? Well, I think the teacher, I don't remember it altogether, but I think the teacher had come to earth and was like, I'm going to get in here and, uh, you know, manipulate these kids. <laughs> that's what they sold it to. But <laughs> I don't think that's what it's about. That's what they had at your book fair? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's, that's how Dusty they, thought it was about. Yeah. He never up, read it. They were yeah. opening up our minds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of JFK stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there it is. Yeah, my teacher's an alien. Oh, yeah, my teacher glows in the dark. I, I also read one. the magic bullet. <laughs> yeah. How'd that thing turn around in the air? What's it about? My teacher fried my brains. About three children. I had that one. Yeah, my teacher fried... Okay. 
I don't think I'm, I think I'm over it. Uh, <laughs> William underscore A underscore Galino. Mm. Galino. Underscore has become a big thing. Like, kids like underscore. When they, when they create their... <laughs> You yeah. think more now than than before? I feel like it's been around for it's it been has on keyboards kids, for years. I know, but kids want to be their thing. Wants to be under. They want underscore in their new handles. Mm. Mm. I think I think younger kids like it. Okay, they're like, no, we need underscore. It's like cool to have underscore. Okay, where it's like would be a nightmare for. It. I just thought all the handles have been taken now, so you have to. Do That's underscore. probably it. But they've made it. It's. It I cool. think kids like it. Like what's well, like? No, no, I want. And Harper had something where she was like, "Underscore's got to be in it," oh. and I was like, "Oh, I don't even know where that's at." <laughs> uh, uh, I was always blank for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, that's not what we called it. Called it blank. You didn't when call the, it underscore when the lines down on the bottom like that. You know what I mean? That's blank. Mm. Like yeah. fill in the blank. Yeah. Oh, fill in, yeah. 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 Like Hangman, you would be like, it's F L blank blank. Right. Because you would say blank like blank, that. Not yeah. underscore. Yeah. Yeah. But it would be blank if you're writing it, I guess. Yeah. 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 Y'all don't keep score. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Marquis, uh, William A. I heard a rumor. This is William A. Gallino. <laughs> I heard a rumor in high school that if you rub chapstick on a Scantron sheet, it would mess up the machine they put it in, and it would give you a good grade. Am I the only one that heard this? I remember hearing that. Mm-hmm. Dusty? And, I, you know, I never was a cheater. Uh, I would just f- fail the test, huh. you know? Y'all didn't like machines in your schools? Well, I, I think we... Well, I mean, I didn't like them, but I think we had them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's that printer up to? According to Snopes, this is false. This oh. does not. This does oh, not. Oh, good happen. old Snopes. Good old. <laughs> <laughs> Snopes has never been wrong about yeah, anything, yeah, right? They're just all right. So it's a real rumor, but Snopes. I heard that false. Snopes was just two people looking up stuff. I don't know if that's true, but I'm like, <laughs> I look at Snopes it. to find out if it's true. Go look up Snopes to say, <laughs> yeah. who's looking this stuff up at Snopes? And they go, don't worry about who's looking this stuff <laughs> yeah, up man. at Snopes. Is Snopes fake? <laughs> Uh, of course, Snopes is going to censor yeah, those results. Snopes not going to let that happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, Daniel Cantrell. Yale accepts 6.5% of applicants, but MTSU rejects 6% of applicants. Some might say that it's even harder to get rejected from MTSU than it is to get accepted to <laughs> Yale. This means that Nate is part of a group that is just as exclusive as going to Yale. Bravo, Nate. Thank wow. you. That's All amazing. Right, way to Thank go. You. Yeah, that is impressive. Congrats, that man. is, uh, well, you know, it's hard work. Hard work's hard work. Uh, Marquis Gwent, Quinn. I took the eight a- act. I took the <laughs> ACT. Uh, I took the ACT my senior year. In the morning, I took it. I woke up with a nasty cold. I took what I thought was some Dayquil. I remember starting the test, but was then woken up by the teacher to find an empty classroom. So I filled in as many blanks as I could and turned it in. I wasn't interested in any college, but I took the test again a few weeks later because our school counselor recommended it. I was able to stay awake the second time. I scored a 16 that time, trying. I scored a 17 on the first test, guessing. Wow. <laughs> Me and Marquis are, we're wow. right at it. Yeah. Well, I like how Marquis is like, I wasn't interested in college, and then he took it twice. I wasn't interested in college either, and I didn't take it. But but I'm sure someone they tell you you fell asleep you go take it and I'm sure you're wondering well what if, I mean what am I gonna maybe I'll get a forty yeah oh yeah above the you know <laughs> you just got to make sure and then you're like and it goes worse than when you guessed you're like yeah yeah it re he reiterated knew, yeah he was like dude I'm not going to go. yeah know. he wanted it to be confirmed he wanted yeah, it to be you know. yeah yeah we we had with the college one we had. Uh, uh, I'm going off of being the, the uh, opinionated. Yeah, I thought of it this weekend. Like I, I don't. It's I, I saw this Elvis clip. So let's let's play this Elvis clip and change it. It's back to it, what I wanted to do. I just seem to keep my own personal views about that to myself because I'm, I'm, I'm just an entertainer and I 
Yeah, I love that. He then gives his opinion on something. Uh, <laughs> what about this jacket? He goes, well, that's stupid. They go, all right, Elvis. But I saw that this weekend, and I was like, I got to get back to that. And it's not that I, w- I don't think I'm going too crazy, but it's like with the, co- it's like, I, you know, what does it matter? Like, that's not why you're here. That's not what my job should be. I'm an entertainer. Maybe my job, maybe I'll want to do that one day. You get older, I think. And that's why it gets hard, especially like it's easy in my act because my act is you're writing it and I'm creating like so here it's a little more free flowing. So it's like you kind of end up like, you know, being like, well, college, like all this kind of stuff. And you're like, I don't, it's every something's going to work for everybody. You're going to go to college. You're going to love it. Are you are you not going to go to college and you're going to love it or you, you know, it, it, does, it doesn't matter. I didn't go to college. That's not why we're here. And I, then I and like I got sent that to me, and uh, by someone like not even uh, attached to this podcast, it was someone else. And I was like, because I always like talk about that because I try to do that. But then it was like this podcast. I was like this after the college stuff. I was like, God, I'm too. It's like a little too high on your horse. And it was like you can feel it where you're like, all right, dude, you got to calm down. You don't. I don't know anything. So it's like you're reminding yourself. So I'm hoping to be – look, I can't promise that I'm not going to say anything ever again. I hope not to. But I'm trying to get – I am working on it to be just back to being fun. Because it's like it doesn't even matter if they agree or disagree. Because it's like it just shouldn't be – that's not why you're here. You know, does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. It's so hard, though. Like I put out a joke about <coughs> 5 o'clock somewhere, and I just have a joke about, uh, say, uh, it's only half past 12, but I don't care. Uh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, and I'm like, but that's not true. You know, yeah. it may it, you know, it may be 5.30 somewhere, but we don't lose a half hour just because you change time zones. And, yeah. man, did the did – the, did the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, time zone police come out <laughs> from everywhere. Yeah. They're like, oh, there's half hour time zones all around the world. And I tried to make a funny joke about it. And they're like, well, a lot of your friends served in Afghanistan. And I was like, okay, now we're <laughs> seem like I'm talking about the yeah. military. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, it's just a joke. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was, I didn't realize that there were so many yeah. half hour time yeah. zones. Yeah, that's all like internet. Like that's, and I, I mean, look, I, I don't think we really, I think these comments are always great and people, I think we do. It's. Uh, I think this is all real people. Like the, some of that, you can see something if you get something that kind of gets a little into the mainstream. Like it's kind of out of your people that are aware of you, and then right. that that kind of stuff starts happening. But that's the stuff that's like. You, this, it's like who cares? Like that's that's just like there's people that are they just this is what they do. They want to argue or they want right. to do this, and that's their thing, and they want to do that, and that's fine. And it's like if you, it's almost like you got to quit it. Not like it's like all right, well then. You realize, like, all right, they're there, and it's hard not to. But then you go, who cares? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's they're that's going to happen, and they're trying to get either you riled up or get into some argument, or even if it is like they're taking it like that with the troops, and they could even be on your side of whatever, and you're still like, all right, dude, like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. what do you like? What do you like, you can't? No one's posting a video with just going like, no, no, I wanted to make a big point. <laughs> Yes. That I don't believe in Afghanistan. <laughs> and you're like, well, he did it, boy. He did it with a Jimmy Buffett reference. Nobody, 99% do not think that. Yes. But the people that type it, you right. know, it's like, because they're just, you know, whatever. Like, it's, yeah, yeah it's like, you know, so. Thankfully, their arguments, though, bumps it up in the algorithm and yes. it gets more views because they're arguing that is about good. it. Yeah. That is good. So it really worked out. Yeah, yeah. But that's, yeah, that's where I, I, I thought of it. I thought of it before I saw this clip, and I was like, I just don't, like, it was like, I'm getting too, I was worried about it. We have a physics ep- episode coming out, too. I don't, and this was before I've claimed this. So just so if you, I don't think I did anything in physics, but I might have, I don't, I might have, I don't believe in, you know, being like, I don't believe in physics or something. I said something. Yeah. But I don't know if I did anything in physics, but I was worried about physics. But it, that one's coming out, so that one... That was uh, a fun one, if I remember correctly. I, I hope so. And it's all very benign. It's all very... Yeah, I don't think anything's super serious. I don't think I'm getting crazy. But it's it just was like, all right, I could feel it leaking towards that way. And I'm like, I need to, I need to back it back down. Because right. my act is not doing that. And it's like, that's what I don't want to do. I want to be... And, like, and then getting that clip was like even more of it was like, oh... This is, 
Yeah, it's like that, dude. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I want. That's what this podcast started. That's what it was. It, it, but it's hard not to think your opinion. Matt, you know, you think, well, let me get my. You start out. calling interviewers honey when you answer yeah. a question. Yeah, they should know. <laughs> yeah, I go. Yeah, get canceled. If- I go white hips. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and then. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, excuse me <laughs> I go what's that <laughs> do you think entertainers should be typical question from a wide hip uh, <laughs> just go more, just make it worse and worse <laughs> just the opposite so then I have to then get I'm a guy that has to give his opinion Maybe look, and maybe one day I will. I feel like if you if you ever one day, like you know, you get older. If, say I'm in fifteen years, I'm like, ah, you know what? I want to stand up for some blah blah. Maybe I will do that. I, I I have no idea. Right now, I know that's not my my thing. So I gotta calm it down. So today's topic is Nate and I traveling together. And, well, I'll uh, still do. <laughs> I'll still have big problems with that. I mean, you don't know how to sit down on a plane. <laughs> I don't know. There's not a man that can, you know. I won't not have opinions about you. <laughs> yeah. There'd be, or I would like dumb stuff. I look. Don't just go through everything. You can't go and f- pick and be like, "Well, you did it." Like I, I can't promise. I'm not going. I'm not perfect. <coughs> as uh, no one is except Bates. And I'm, then, not, I'm sorry, I'm not what? I said you're the only perfect one. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, but That's true. Yeah. Uh, him and Jesus. <laughs> it goes, when you get to heaven, Jesus will go, what's up, man? He'll go, what's up? We'll fist bump. Yeah, he goes, God, we did it right, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. We did it. Yeah. I've been waiting on you, brother. <laughs> and then Bates asking me, because where's the, uh, I has a lot of questions, where's the bathroom and stuff like that? Like, where, where am I staying? Like, it's a, and he goes... <laughs> So and he's like, God. And know, then this. Jesus breaks out cigars, and you yeah. go, you know I can't do that. <laughs> he goes, are you kidding me right now? Are you? I, it was hard when I did it down there. Uh, yeah. So I, I might not be perfect on it, and I might still. I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll keep an eye on it. So bear with me. But I, you know, just to let you know. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this. Read some of these ads. Uh Weather is near <clears throat> perfect most nights, so get outside and enjoy your solo stove. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. Got emotional. <clears throat> I've had a cough ever since the cigars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, take it camping to the lake. Have cigars with your, uh, with your buddies that can actual men. <laughs> and uh, do it over solo stove. Yeah. There have been uh, the solar stove is the best fire pit I've seen. Again, it doesn't you don't smell like uh, you're around a stove. That's the best. It never you, it never gets better than that. Uh, you don't have to wash your clothes. It's like, I mean, it's just I, I truly I love it. Uh, there's no setup. Just unbox it and enjoy. A little fire starter wood. You get an awesome fire. The fire looks great. There's something great about sitting around a fire. It's nice. You do enjoy. It. And uh, upgrade your backyard with a solar stove fire pit. It's the perfect way to get outside and sin- spend more time with family and friends. Solar stove fire pits, they're brilliantly engineered and built to last. They offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Right now, you can get big discounts on all fire pits during Solar Stove's Labor Day sale. And use promo code NATE at solarstove.com for an extra $10 off. That's solarstove.com. Promo code Nate for ten dollars off on top of their incredible Labor Day discounts. But hurry, the Labor Day sale ends September eleventh. Football season is here, and NFL season starts this weekend. I'm excited about NFL football, and PricePicks.com is the one app you can go to to pick two to four, two to five players, and they will, and if they will score more or less than the Price Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. <coughs> Pardon me. It's easy because you're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Uh, take Derrick Henry, for example. Do mm-hmm. you think he's going to score a touchdown this Sunday? Uh, yeah. Two or three. Yeah. All right. Well, if you go on prizepicks.com, I think it's at .5, I looked. So that means if you, score, if you bet he'll score more than that, you win. If he doesn't score a touchdown, you lose. It's that simple. Go in there and play. They have projections on sports, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, golf. 
college sports, all of it, boxing, pretty much any sport there is. They you can go in there and you can make a pick. Entries can be made in a minute or less. It's currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks apps or go to PricePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code NATE. So if you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. They're giving you free money, so go do it. Don't forget to enter promo code NATE at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. <clears throat> With Vroom, you can buy a car entirely online and have it delivered straight to you so you never have to go to the dealership again. I just bought a car from a dealership. What a mistake. I wish I'd known about Vroom. This guy bullied me into paying more than I probably should have. Well, that's what's so great about Vroom. Instead of going to a dealership, you can do it all from your phone as you listen to Nate Land. Take a break. Buy a car. With Vroom, you can browse thousands of cars in one place so you don't have to spend your weekend driving out to a million different <clears throat> dealerships, price shopping around. Don't do it. You never have to haggle or negotiate the price of a car and when you sell your car on vroom you get a price instantly so you don't have to waste time at a dealership or deal with creeps online flaky buyers vroom is entirely on online so next time you need to buy a car just grab your phone go to vroom.com and check out thousands of great cars that's v-r-o-o-m vroom.com vroom.com and finally for me our next product, oh, we use it every day. We love it. It's our old friends, Athletic Greens. None of us eat very well. I do. I eat great, but this table is a problem. We're all looking for simple ways to be healthy. Every time we show up here for the podcast, they got Athletic Greens ready for us. It tastes great. It's easy to make, easy to drink. One scoop of powder. Forget all the other stuff in your cupboard. Clear it out. Throw it away. All you need is Athletic Greens. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals. Just put it in water, shake it up, and you'll have mental clarity and alertness. It's cheaper than getting all that other stuff yourself. Costs less than $3 a day right now. It is time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, one scoop of water. That's it. No need for a million different pills. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Mm. I'll tell you what I love about Factor. You know, <laughs> I, I, I love that, you know, my wife is at home with a baby and these meals are just sitting there in the fridge yep. and she can just pop it in the oven. You can do it in the microwave, but I'm pretty anti-microwave. She'll put it right in the oven, heat it right up, and it tastes great. And her and the baby can eat one meal and be full. And that's all I'll let them have all day. No, they uh, they love it. I mean, Factor is great. I like it. Factor makes lunch or dinner, uh, dinner on, on busy days a total breeze. Their fresh, never-frozen meals are delivered ready to eat and heat in two minutes. Factor now offers 30-plus meals per week and 33-plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, and snacks. The smoothies are great, too. I had one. I left for the weekend, came home, was like, hey, where are those smoothies? My wife was like, I ate them all. <laughs> oh, wow. So it was very disappointing. Uh, but she loved them. So uh, head to go.factor75.com slash dollop. 130 and use code dollop130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That's code dollop130 at go.factor75.com slash dollop130 for $130 off. Wow, Wow. that's good. You should do, uh, like instead of where your microwave goes, you should just put bricks. Oh, yeah. Just That'd brick be it up. Fun. Just brick it up. That would be. I think it sets a tone for when people walk in the house. Yeah, shows. And they go, "Is that what? Is that brick?" And you go, is it, "Where? What went there?" You go, microwave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. taking a hard stance against hard it. Hard stance against it. Yeah, yeah we're just getting yeah. started. He goes, yeah. "We're just getting." Yeah, he goes, <laughs> he goes, "We're just getting started." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I like that." Just pick up a brick and touch it. They go, "What's that?" I go, "It's my phone." Yeah. I don't believe in anything. <laughs> I was at my mom's house yesterday. She has a microwave from the 80s, and she had duct tape on it to keep the heat from getting out. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was like, why do you have duct tape? She's like, ah, somebody was leaking. So, 
Wow. You Lee can hate. Me. <laughs> Why don't you buy her a new mirror for Christmas? I know. I was, I, that I, radiation I was thinking about that story, out. and I was like, yeah. you'll, you'll suggest that. And you're right. She doesn't want anything new. She she showed her how to forward an email yesterday, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah. All right. That's nice. Yeah. She had a chain email to forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had to forward it to 10 people in under an hour. Yeah. 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 She is a lot of work. Uh, but I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> I went to Nashville, so I got a Nashville soccer jersey on mm. uh, and a hat. It was a Nashville soccer game uh, with uh, uh, my brother and uh, all his We said in their suite, uh, they, they, their, their comp- his company, GOD, like they have, a, they actually had, they got a place and it was awesome. And uh, it was the, that's a, that stadium's awesome. Was that your first time going to a game? Yeah. Yeah. It was, and that, that stadium was, it was very cool. I saw your video. That stadium yeah. was awesome. That, the intro is crazy. I mean, like the, the field looks different every time the lights go off and on. It's just, I, I've never seen that before. And I was like, this, that's such a cool. I thought that was edited video. No, no. It's just how the lights would make it wow. go. Yeah. Vandy was supposed to, I think, play there. That would have been awesome if Vandy played yeah, there. Yeah, they were talking about it. Yeah, that would have been, it just such, it would be such a different football stadium. Like it would be, you know. It's just a different kind of thing, but that place was super cool, and uh, they won, uh, beat Austin, who apparently is number two, is a big win for Nashville soccer. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I think I think I can get into soccer. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna try. I don't know how the sport works, so I'd have to learn it. So but, ball, I, but feet only. <laughs> I got a basic idea of it. Okay, and you can use your hands if you're out of bounds, and you got to throw it back in. And if you're the keeper. If you're the keeper, but only if you have gloves on. Right, you have to wear gloves. I don't, I don't know if you have to I don't wear know. gloves. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but you have a different shirt. So. <laughs> a little padding. It'd there, be right? like, that's what they would tell you. Aaron, can you, like, can't touch with my hand. You're like, Aaron, do you look like you're the only one wearing that? Or do you see other people wearing that? And you're like, well, a lot of us have the same shirt on. Because then you can't yeah, touch yeah, it with yeah. your hands. Right. The keeper. You're talking about the goalie? Yeah. Okay. Is that what it's called? The keeper? I think real soccer people will call it a keeper. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, we called it a goalie. Yeah, well, the goalkeeper is what. And it was always the big kid. They always wanted it to be the big kid when I was playing. And it's like, does that make him better at keeping the? Well, it's 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 he's if he's bigger, he can. It's harder to. It's just a bigger body in the net. Yeah, I think there's less space to yeah. score. Yeah, yeah. But he was a big fat but guy. But they weren't that big. Like if they go, you, know I mean? you got to use a door, and you wouldn't be like, well, just use the doggy door. And you're like, well, let's use a regular door. <laughs> Like that's a at least a better chance. You yeah, know? it's like that. Yeah, yeah. soccer is a game of inches, man. I think you take any t- any kind of advantage you can get. Is that what they say about soccer? Nah, I don't. Uh, know. They okay. say it about football. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't think soccer. It's 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 a long field game of yards. Really. Yeah, it's a, yeah, <laughs> it's a yards. game of running. Yeah. And but I I like I it's like kind of like I I kind of enjoy watching it. Like it was you know I mean we scored it was we won three nothing but. I, you get over the scoring because you just kind of like the – it's, you know, it's kind of a nice – it feels like it's like kind of calm. It's like back and forth. And then once they get down there, it's like – it's just like rapid. It can become rapid fire of them trying to score. And you're like, ah. Like, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's pleasant. I watched one on TV recently too, and I just caught myself just like really – almost like not – like not having the fast pace was nice. It was slowed down. Baseball's it's, like that. Yeah, yeah. Really slowing it down. Really slowing it down. Really slowing it down. I always felt like the people that I knew that liked soccer were people that like used to follow the band Fish. Mm. And I just felt like they transferred that energy into soccer. They go, you should get into sports. And you yeah. go, all right. And then they're like, not that. You chose the wrong one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they go, you let me choose anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. It was fun. Vander- I enjoyed it. Vanderbilt's 2-0. and Vanderbilt's 2-0. and I mean, we are... Rolling. All right. Got a good matchup this week against Wake Forest. We're going to see. Uh, we're going to really see it. We got to work on getting College of Game Day to come back to Nashville and have you be the guest picker. Yeah. Yeah. I That'd agree. be great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, should, I think it should be. What's a bigger game this weekend than Vanderbilt Wake Forest? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. No, that's the only one I'm interested in. That's a huge career milestone. Would it be to oh, be the yeah. guest picker on College Game Day? Yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. You got to be pretty famous, though. I mean, it's like they. Sometimes they have some. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Nashville is going to have a lot magazine, of country. Like, didn't Variety Magazine call you America's favorite comedian? That is true. I mean, that's, but, I mean, how famous does it get? Yeah, 
Uh, it gets a little more. <laughs> it's, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the people they usually get, they, it, it, they're pretty big. Yeah, Brad Paisley or somebody like that. Yeah. yeah. Does the uh, SEC Network, do they have a guest picker? I don't know. I don't yeah. know how that works. They don't? Well, I was going to say, you could I did Paul Feinbaum's show once. But... Oh, well, that's big. Mm-hmm. You call in and Feinbaum. yell, yell about No, it was Alabama. here. It was in. It was at Vanderbilt. They were they were doing it, and uh, and I went down there and did it. Yeah, listen to Feinbaum a lot in Alabama. I love Feinbaum. Feinbaum. Was always on just people, just people embarrassing our state. But I was so into it. Yeah, people screaming. I took a lot of pride in those people yelling, screaming. Yeah, I'm into it. I was like, that's my mom. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 It seems like you got to, yeah, you got to be like, if your emotions are really getting going over something, you got to go like, all right, let me, let me think about something. <laughs> like, why am I so mad? Let me sleep on it. Yeah. That's what you should Especially do. Especially when you're, the older you get, you got to just go like, all right, dude, I'm, I mean, these could be my children. Yeah. I need to, I need to reel it in a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, but, uh, you know, I'm not trying to give an opinion. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw. I, I was listening to Feinbaum one time, and they had had a guest uh, guest host. I guess the week before, and and that guest host was still in with Feinbaum, and people would just call in and just trash that guy. <laughs> and I'm like, he's still in the yeah. room oh, here. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, take it easy. They, they were like, he was it. talking about music. We want to talk about football, and it's like. The guy was, you know, he's talking about what he knows, I guess. What's funny is, like, the ra- the uh, radio callers are almost like the first internet comment. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he, like, no one takes the radio callers, like, that serious. Like, no one outside of, you know, I mean, those guys do, but it's like, yeah, it's, they, they're able to, like, kind of brush it off, but we take the comments. Because they stay. <clears throat> I don't think it's just stay, because I don't think a regular person's ever dealt with that. Like, a radio personality is like, yeah, dude, people call and hope I die every day. Yeah. And, like, they, <laughs> they say the craziest stuff, and they're mad we don't do exactly what they want us to do. They're probably pretty used to it. Yeah. But then now, like, video comments, or, well, it's a, it's a person that's not used to it, is you can just have a video go viral, and you're, like, a guy that works at FedEx, <laughs> and then you're, like, the country wants you to die. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this this is crazy. You know, it's like yeah. now everybody gets a piece of that action <laughs> mm-hmm. where it used to be just radio. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about like if you call in and just trash a player, unless that player is listening on the radio at that moment, he can't, or in the studio, he ain't going to react. But if you tweet about him, he can go home that night and then reply whenever, you Yeah, know. now they capture it on the radio, though, and put it on Twitter. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to hear it. Yeah. And they're not a fan, you know. We were listening one time when two sports guys on 104.5 got in an argument with each other. Oh, yeah. That was a great one. <clears throat> that was oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. They, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, sports talk's great. It's like, but I, I don't listen to It's, uh, I listen to music. I know, used to love it. it. It's pretty I lame now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sports talk. It's I don't just, even listen to the words of sports talk. Yeah, I listen yeah. to the just, vibe just, of it. Yeah. Vibe. I'm just like, what are they talking about? You go, I don't you know. I just feel the energy, dude. I go, I don't know. I don't They're know. They're not happy. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Someone's mad about something. Speaking of Vanderbilt, stop me if I'm jumping the gun here, but I wanna I wanna talk through this parlay, this bet I made. Well, today. you probably you I would imagine you're jumping the gun. Uh yeah, you're right. if you want to say what we're gonna talk about. We're we're, we're talking about gambling. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's like, I mean, I want people to realize that you're like, oh, am I jumping the gun here? And you go, oh, what do you want to talk about? I'd like to talk about gambling a little bit. And the, today's topic is gambling. Yeah. <laughs> and you, well, I mean, you, I didn't know if this would be a way to ease into it. We were no, talking about I think, it would, I think it would be. You're right. I don't think you would ask, tell me if I'm jumping the gun. You would just go, hey, I know our topic today. I have something that goes along with it. Well, you are jumping the gun. I'm excited. I'm sorry. I wanted yeah. to mention that. We had our fantasy football draft this weekend. Uh, let him get it out. It's a bunch of <laughs> seven-year-olds doing fantasy football. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's our 27th year. Of doing it. Wow. That's how I was going to say Two years it. longer yeah. than fantasy football's been going. I did look up. Like I thought we might have one of the oldest leagues there yeah. is. And fantasy football, it started back in the 60s. Really? Oh, wow. Some guy invented back in the 60s and really took off in the 80s with rotisserie baseball. You guys remember that? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's just another word for fantasy baseball, right? It is, but it was called a rotisserie league. Oh, mm-hmm. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but are you one of the old? I mean, what's the oldest fantasy league? Or? Well, so some guy who was part owner of the Raiders started it in 1962. They're on a cross country trip, and they're like, you know, it'd be fun if we just picked our own players. And they started a league in Oakland in the 60s, and then the 80s, some guy started one on the East Coast. It just gradually it took off. It blew up in the 90s once the internet started, but it's been around in some fashion. For a long time, mm-hmm. so no, we're not one of the we're the yeah. oldest one of anyone I know that there's a uh, a Nate Land fantasy football league now. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, oh. we all got our own league. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, do I have one? Yeah. Well, there's oh, Aaron okay. Land right there. All Here's right. the Aaron Land league. Oh, I Some hate of these, fantasy football. These names are very funny. Oh, there's people in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a real. Oh, wow. Nicole's Butcher. We got Steaming Hot, the Unbelievable Penguins. How about it? Oh, the, the Tear the Shares. shares. I don't understand what's going on. Arizona well, these are triangles. references to previous episodes. Was, oh, these yeah, are yeah. things that they've named. We do their a podcast. Teams. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> I like the Arizona Triangles. Yeah, I like that. Here's yeah, Nate them. Land, Cut Larry, yeah, Civilian Stations. Wow, the Wilson County Fairs, Team Vandy. I like that Wilson County Fairs. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, that's super fun. Here's Dusty Town. Oh, we got he, Bible he Talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Area 51 conspiracy. All right. Yee. Okay. Yee. Hunt right. Heroes. <laughs> HOA Trash Skippers. Well, this are, is a good fantasy league. These yeah. are so great. Well, man. this is actually getting me into it now. I've always hated it. But, Yee. Yee. Uh, frozen is... Candy Bar Concussion. My sister will love that. <laughs> Team Bay <Bass> Sandals. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Now and, we're talking. And then we got Batesville. Not enough players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nosebleed yeah. seats. Bob Ripple pants. <laughs> According uh, to this. <laughs> Not Bob Ripple pants. The Lebanon squirrels. <laughs> Nate Spring Lane. Break Warriors. Spring Break Warriors. That's a great one. Oh, according, that's really good. According to this. Yeah. That's a good one. I like the Wilson County CPAPs. <laughs> <laughs> They're all great. I'm rooting for this. This is fun. Yeah. That is Thank good. y'all for all doing right, this. I'm into this. Yeah, we're yeah. Let's we're we keep an uh, eye on. We'll see how they're doing. You know, yeah, that was created on the uh, Facebook fan page. So, oh. yeah, we're do yeah. All right, that's okay. fun. And uh, Nate Landman made the fifty man, fifty three man roster. All right, right. Nice. Yeah, so, so he's time. on the team. He's on the team. So we'll keep up with him. That's amazing. Yeah, Nate Landman. Yeah. We built him. <laughs> yeah, in our uh, lab. Apparently, there's a UFC fighter. People have told me about. It's called Nate Land. What's his last name? It's Nate Land something. I can't remember, but it's a, very similar. And he's from Clarksville. Landwehr. Land- oh, he's, Nate Landwehr. Oh, wow. He's from Clarksville? I believe so, yeah. That's a, Eight wins. That could be the clothing What's line. his record? Nate Landwehr. His record is 16-4. Uh, four. and four. Wow. He's in the UFC? Eight wins by knockout. When's he fight? His nickname's The Train. Oh, last fight. was He just had his last fight. Yeah. Uh, and I have that same tattoo on my shoulder. <laughs> the train. <laughs> I've got the one at the bottom. <laughs> what does that say? I don't even know. I don't yeah. know. It just says Bates. Bates. <laughs> that looks like Bates. Yeah. yeah it it would be if, if it's Bates' brother, you know. If, or it looks like Bates' son. That... <laughs> Went from my brother to my yeah. son real quick. <laughs> well, I was like, brother, I go, I don't he, you know, like, I'm not being yeah. that nice. Yeah, it's his son. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, the train. One. They call him the train. I'm rooting for him. Sponsor Root him. for the train. Yeah, so go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to jump the gun here, but yeah. I made this bet this morning. So here's the here's the it's a three leg parlay. Let's start with you have a gambling problem. Oh, yeah. huge problem. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is this is Vanderbilt to win the national championship mm. and the Braves win the World Series and the Titans win the Super Bowl. I bet two dollars. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if all those three things happen, I will win seven hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. That's crazy! Yeah. Wow. So that's worth it for two bucks. For two bucks, that we'll is see worth what it. happens. That dude. is yeah. worth it. I'm against gambling, but that's worth it. Yeah. Well, those parlays is how they get you. <laughs> exactly. They want you to do the parlays. They make the odds so incredible. You're like, oh, that's worth it, and it is if it pays off. The but they know insane. they know you're not going to. One of them's going to be wrong. I mean, no offense, but I think Vanderbilt's really bringing that down. <laughs> yeah, those huh? are a hundred thousand plus one hundred thousand odds. That's what's really. Making I mean, I'm it. a yeah. big fan of Vanderbilt. I love them, but I think that's they got a tough schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got a tough, they road have a tough ahead. schedule. But 
We'll be all right. Well, um, I was going to jump ahead here. Somebody uh, bet last year on FanDuel, AFC and NFC championship game, they guessed the score exactly right on both. And it paid 290000 to one <laughs> odds. So they bet uh, $20 and won $580,000. Wow. All right. Big payout for the government, too, on that one. I yeah. Think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. The government goes, yes. <laughs> Phil Mickels- Mickelson bet in 2001, he bet the Giants to win the Super – no, the Ravens to win the Super Bowl and the Diamondbacks to win the World Series, and they both won. Wow. He won like $80,000 or something. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of work that you have to go to – like the ones that do get this correct – I'd imagine it's got to take over your life, which mm-hmm. would be where the addiction probably comes in. Right, and <laughs> it's uh, you ha- yeah, you have to be like just obsessed with it. Yeah, imagine if you put that effort into just a career. Yeah, what 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 might happen? Well, Phil's doing all right. Well, Phil, yes, yes. <laughs> but in these in these type, you just I think th- these you just sit back and you're really just waiting till the championship to even know, you know, if you're win or lose. Where some of these like baseball fantasy league you're keeping up every day yeah that's a full-time job yeah yeah i'm not in a fantasy football league uh i haven't been for the past few years Jix, it's like i you get it just it's a whole thing and you're like i i don't even i forget about it i'm just taking a spot from someone that would want to play yeah and I, I do want the idea of it you do you kind of want to play like i i was you know you think like ah, i'd like to It'd be fun to do it, you know, like it, you get some friends and you're, but then it's just like, I, am I, I'm going to just be annoyed. And <laughs> the draft too is like, that's a whole, when that happens, takes your whole night up. Mm-hmm. But I mean, people that love it, like you have your group, like yeah, I, I do it. I do love that. It's like we get together once a year and it's like a catch up also. Mm-hmm. So it's fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do when you were like, you got fired from the. Or not when you quit, you're just... I think you're fired. Your catch-up was... Uh, you got canceled. You were one of the first ones that ever got canceled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they... Uh, no, you quit your day job. And... But, like, that that was that was a catch-up. You go back in, and you're like, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I got a lot, yeah, those guys see each other every day. Because it's guys I used to work with. Yeah. Oh, okay. And... Laura Hinkle. <laughs> well, yeah, she's not in our fantasy league, but <laughs> Lori Hinkle did yeah. used to work there, and she... Grew up with it, Dusty. Yeah, worked at Channel 5. She's the first person to tell me about Dusty. And to her credit, she's the only one that's ever told me anyone I care about. Because everyone else is like, hey, I know a guy who does comedy. You know what I'm talking about. And it always ends up just being somebody who did an open mic one time. Right. Oh, yeah. At a, at a sports bar. They've never tried it again. And I remember telling me, she's like, I got a friend named Dusty Slay who does comedy. And he's in Charleston now. I'm like, I don't care. I <laughs> yeah. guarantee you he's nothing. I guarantee you this dude stinks. <laughs> yeah. And I was right, but. <laughs> but I got better. I worked it. I worked yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Yeah, like, I watched him more like Rusty Slay. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knock some of the. Right. I had a guy after a show once. He goes, man. He goes, man, my uncle's a funny man, too. I go, oh, does he do comedy? What's his name? He's like, ah, oh, no, nah, he's just funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome, dude. Yeah, hopefully we'll bump into each other at some point. Yeah, just a couple of fun, funny minds. Just got some good stories, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the one profession like? If your dad, what he does, nobody goes up to him afterwards and is like, "Oh, I could do all that," because nobody knows how he does it. I think they would go up to him though, and you know, be like, I, "They're trying to figure it out." Yeah, like it's this. They're you know, someone's like, "Nah, I saw what he was doing." Like it's like they're trying to. It's a lot of that. I could see that. Or if someone plays an instrument or something, either you know how to do it or you don't. But we've all made our friends laugh. Right. So I think everybody kind of thinks they could do it. Well, we everybody do. is funny. I mean, everybody can be funny. Everybody tries to be funny. But you see it. You see it when you – the difference of a professional comic and uh, not is – it's a pretty big difference. If you really look at it, you can see – you know, it's like as like I think as a comic, you can see people laugh at jokes that you're like, I think they're just doing an easy kind of joke. Like they're they're being funny. It's an easy way that they're being funny, or they're making a very obvious joke, and you're like, 
I don't know. Like you see a lot of, because mm-hmm. I think people like try to sell comedy now. Like so, a lot of people that are not in comedy, but they, you know, it could be like a writer or something. Like tries to be, you know, well, I'm the funny writer, and you're like, well, it's it's a different thing. I think it's a that guy thing. though thinks his uncle's funnier than Aaron. Probably the maddest I ever got. I was at an open mic in Nashville, Belcourt Taps, and there was it used to always do a mic after the writers round where these musicians would play songs. And then they'd sit in the back after and watch the open mic, some of them. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine was just bombing on stage. And it was like the room wasn't paying attention. He's just bombing. And I'm listening to these musicians just talk. And they're like, and one guy goes, I feel like I could do better just off the dome up there. And I was just steaming, mm. furious at these steaming guys. Hot. Being steaming hot. Yeah, I was like, no, you couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't do better off the dome. Yeah. You musician. Furious, dude. I drove home 100 miles an hour. I was so mad at wow. <laughs> these guys. Wow. I couldn't say anything about it. I'm like, you guys are such idiots. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. that's the thing. When you're a musician, you're like, you're, you you play a song, everybody claps for you, and right. then in between songs, you'll drop a little joke, oh, and everybody God. laughs, and now you think that you're hilarious because the pressure's off. You're not up there to be funny. Right. Like, everyone would applaud if I told a joke and then, like, hit some great <laughs> guitar chords, they'd be like, whoa, guitar too? Yeah. But the musician would be like, that's easy. Exactly. You do you Stairway know. to Heaven, it's like nine-minute song. Or what's the, <laughs> Between jokes. What's the Raisin song? The uh, Heard it to the grapevine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the Ra- California Raisin yeah, song. Yeah, California Raisin oh, song. Okay. What made you think of that one? Because it's super long. Ding, ding, and so I, we've done like it like playing cards at on the on the road. And I, yeah, I've OCCR had, I've had, I've had a, yeah. it's a super long song. Yeah. And so I've had it as it's playing like on the speaker. Yeah. And then uh, when I, I'll just kind of be keeping an eye on everybody. I know everybody's kind of talking, not paying attention. I'll just start it again. <laughs> and so I've done, I started it one one time. It was I mean, it was like it's kind of like Mulaney's joke, like replaying it. But it was uh I did it where it was, I mean, maybe 27 minutes and you just, and no one's <laughs> saying, cause it gets where they stop talking and they just start playing the music. Yeah. It's funny. And so you can kind of just restart it and like, you have no idea. And I mean, I just watch them and they're like, finally someone's like, how is this song? <laughs> like, oh, but it was yeah. like, it was like 27 minutes or something yeah. that that song played. And I just kept quietly. I just would wait till everybody kind of. Got like, ah, oh, they got talking. You're like, yeah. oh, are you kidding me? Just hit it then. <laughs> and then and it just, it's back in it. You know, I have no idea. It's a jam, too. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a fun one to try to do. Yeah. Uh, like, to where, see how long, you know. I mean, it's Mulaney's joke where you talk about playing that song. I did that at, uh, I don't know Mulaney's joke. I did that at Donaldson Bowl once on the jukebox. I put in Barracuda like <laughs> 10 straight times. Yeah. <laughs> and about after the fifth or sixth time, just look, people look around like, yeah. this song again? Oh, That's the, yeah. His joke is you never heard that Mulaney joke. It goes to it's the a diner. Really great joke. It's a great joke. He plays, "What's up, Pussycat?" Oh, uh, uh, I think that's By, the like, song. Neil Diamond. Yeah, or and just yeah. keeps doing it, and then goes through watching everybody. They just did it a bunch. Yeah, yeah. And then after like four or five times, he slipped in another song. Yeah, just so they would all go. <sighs> yeah, and then after that, he played it again. Yeah, yeah. and where are they at? Just a some diner. diner. Oh, yeah. a diner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy that bar... I've always thought it was crazy that bars let the patrons control the song. It's crazy to me that they let you do that. Because it's so important As to, the vibe, to the vibe of the bar, the tone. We've talked before on this podcast about how it influences behavior in the bar. music, And we just let patrons control it it's a gamble it's crazy to me it is a gamble yeah, i think yeah. but it, a, a jukebox <laughs> is what drives some people to they will go because of a jukebox because it's like i gotta pick some songs so you go up there and you pick some songs and then you pick some songs and then you like it makes it fun and uh it does make it fun but it can also do like what we're describing somebody can yeah yeah somebody can ruin the night for everybody that's the that's the, that's the game you're playing yeah <laughs> you know i stopped at a waffle house recently and i was the only one in there and I sat at the bar, and because I was the only one in there, the staff, there's like five of them, they had nothing to do once they brought me my food. So they just stood there and just kind of stared out the window, because where else are you going to stare? But I'm just eating, <laughs> and there's just five people just kind of looking my exact direction. Mm-hmm. You sitting at the bar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting at the bar, and they're just kind of looking. It was just so awkward. 
to I love that food. you go in there and it's empty and you take the bar seat. I would yeah. for sure get what? them both. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Away Did you from play a jukebox this. or... We're just not talking about jukebox anymore. Well, they always have a jukebox in Waffle oh, okay. House. And, and you didn't at go that for... moment, yeah. I'm like, I wish I had yeah. a quarter to go yeah. play. I, I'm surprised you didn't have a quarter. Uh, yeah, I usually do. Yeah, you got Some hard candy. Rattle some. <laughs> James, was, can you guys, you guys break a quarter? <laughs> Two dimes and a nickel, please. Yeah. <laughs> can y'all break a half dollar? You got two quarters up there, and they go, what? <laughs> you have a half dollar? He goes, I only got silver dollars, half dollars. Also, I think it's been a while since you Pull played the jukebox. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're getting quarter songs anymore at the jukebox. They're expensive now. Yeah. Bars, everyone has the app on their phone, you know? It can be like a well, dollar. You, oh, because you can, you can pay with credit card, too, on your phone? Oh, yeah. Well, they do it. Uh, yeah, that could get, you know. Uh, I had it. You do, I had to get air in my tire this weekend, and so they have it where you can wow. just do your phone. And you can do like Apple Pay or you can put a credit card in or whatever. That's kind of, rude. but I went to get air. Now I'm talking about something that not jukebox related now. Uh, but there was a jukebox there. But it's, I go to get air. You know, when you go get air, you're, the odds of someone getting air are basically zero. <laughs> it's just zero. You know, the air is always open. Yeah. No one's ever yeah. there. Yeah. And I try to get air three times and had to, and and had to go to a different place. I go to this one. This lady's getting air. I kind of brush that one off. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And we then we drive all the way over to this other one, and the air's empty. I start pulling up, and a guy backs a lawnmower, and he's <laughs> and then we're like, is he just going to block it? And he gets out. He needs air. <laughs> I go to another one. There's a guy there. Just got out of. His, I mean, I mean, I'm pulling up. Like it was like a time that they just a sound went off. It was like everybody go get air now. <laughs> And you're like, after three times, you're like, well, what do you want me to, like, how are this many people getting air? I had to get air this morning. Oh, yeah. Here. And I, get, I really did think it was going to be like a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I got air, it was $1.50. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For what, like 90 seconds probably? Yeah, like guess. not even that. I had a tire. It's a long, it feels like it's long. Okay. You, I got around to all tires. Yeah, it's not like the vacuum. Yeah, Vacuum, I think you got to be ready though. Yeah. It's like I right, go take this stuff. I did it with. I showed Harper. I go Harper, get out. We'll show you how to put air in a tire. Yeah, you got to have all the things screwed off. You know, before you're ready. I was like, you got to let's prep. Be ready. I go. This can't be. A, don't get out. Put it in, and then think about what you're going to do. <laughs> you just wasted a good minute of your air. That's a nickel's worth. Now of you have. It's not the time so. for an Instagram story. No, yeah. you got to. Don't Instagram story putting the change in. Do you know how lazy I am? I had a tire losing air, and for probably two months, I filled it up every day at the gas station mm -hmm. because it would lose air. Instead of getting it changed? I'd drive out here to the podcast. I'd fill up at that gas station yeah. close to your house, and then I'd fill it up there again on the way out because it had lost so much air. Yeah. And then I filled it up before I got home. Yeah, I just did all that rather than just get a See, new tire. See, that's actually not lazy. I mean, that's yeah. the that's more work than I thought. You were going to go. You know how lazy I was. You just pulled into <laughs> yeah. a tire discount, and then they go, "Do you want to get out?" You go, "No," and then you <laughs> sat there and say, and you just talked to them from the car and said, "My tire's flat. It's that front one." They're trying to jack it up with you in it. And they're like, "Golly, they had two jacks out there." They go, hey, he's, one jacks for your side, just to get. And then, <laughs> but I think it's a laziness of like uh, I know where the air is. Yeah. But like getting a new tire, that's a whole thing. The lazy, it's the laziness of you. Like you got to go talk. You don't have to talk to anybody to keep right. redoing this. Right. Right. And the laziness of that, you got to. I got to go be involved. Yeah, I, I I understand that. When you're like, I'd rather just. Yeah, I got to drive there. What are you gonna keep my car? You're gonna yeah. blah blah. You like, I'd rather just have a wreck on the road. <laughs> tire flies off and then I gotta walk to the next exit right. alone yeah and you would rather risk that yeah that's the gamble and then you'd be okay with it if exactly. it happened you'd be like yeah it was worth it I made my that's own that's what bed. gambling's all about mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah that is the gamble right. yeah. <laughs> good, good segue Dusty so this weekend kicks off the biggest time of year for sports betting um, the first weekend of NFL football season it is blown up in the last few years because in 2018 the supreme court uh ruled that states What's the supreme court good 
<laughs> well, we've done this episode of Supreme oh. Court. Go watch that one. Um, Supreme Court ruled that states, individual states, could do online sports gambling in 2018. Before then, I think uh, I think it was just Nevada that could do it. But um, New Jersey like filed a lawsuit and went all the way to Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled. So now 30 states can do online sports gambling. And uh, so now it's just blown up where all these online apps, FanDuel, DraftKings, all that. You see yeah. commercials for it. The NFL now promotes it. You see point spreads mentioned in telecast and stuff like that. They were all against it, but now they're all for it because they see the money right. that's going to be made in it. And then fantasy sports is blown up too. There was two Major League Baseball players that got in a fight earlier this year yeah, that was awesome. over fantasy football. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. One guy slapped another guy because <laughs> – the guy cheated or something in fantasy football, right? Yeah, was it Mike Trout, the commissioner of that fantasy league? I think or so. Something? How yeah, do you yeah. cheat in fantasy football? I guess if Mike Trout wasn't keeping the rules straight, the oh, it's like started... a trade or something, right? Yeah, like some I think waiver, so. yeah. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Pham slapped Jock Peterson during batting practice. <laughs> over that, yeah, it was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. So now over forty-six million people play fantasy sports in America. Wow, wow. it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I bet all the money's gonna go to good stuff. <laughs> what? Well, where does the money go? Oh, to the company if they don't. Yeah, and yeah. then I guess the states get the sales tax oh. on it. Yeah, and I don't know how they. I guess they can just track where you're doing it at because, like, you have to play it in your state. Like in Tennessee, if you're a resident of Tennessee, you can't go to another state and play. They said and do what? Do online gambling. Like, you need to be uh, in your state. I think, I think you, you can. can you got to be in a state that allows it. Yeah. If you're not in a state that allows it, it won't let you do it. Or you use a VPN, you know? But what is that? To... Is that what you do? What is that? You can use a VPN to assume an IP address from a yeah. different part of the world. Oh. And but if, if you, you can... go to Kentucky... Oh, that's illegal. what been, people have been doing. That's how they were doing online gambling when it was all illegal. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't want to... Give people instructions. I'm sure you're the only one that's figured this out. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I yeah. said maybe. <laughs> I don't want to jump the gun, dude. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> if you go to, like, Kentucky and did online gambling there, would you have to pay sales tax in Kentucky if you won? Mm, I don't know. I bet I don't so. Know. Yeah. I don't why know. Why would you go somewhere else to play online? I just mean if you're on the road. <laughs> say you're on the road and you're at <laughs> Comedy Off Broadway and you're in your hotel room bored. Yeah. And oh, you want to gamble. I think you would be registered, though. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't know. I don't know how fun this is to talk about. So. <laughs> I just pictured you driving across the border to gamble online <laughs> yeah. for yeah. no reason. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get like some you gotta of that go Kentucky buy a lot- internet. You gotta buy a lottery ticket uh-huh. and you gotta drive over. Well, that's what I used to do growing up. You know, in Alabama, you had to be 19 to buy cigarettes, and we didn't have lottery in Alabama. So when we were 18, we would drive to Georgia and buy lottery tickets and cigarettes. Oh. You'd go back to the trailer, scratch them off. Yeah. You know? You could smoke cigarettes at 18, but you couldn't buy them until you were 19. Well, you could smoke them at any age, really. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Just if anybody's listening. Yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, you know, don't do it, but okay. um, but we were doing it. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, I mean, you had yeah, you, legally you couldn't buy them in Alabama until nineteen. Right. All right. But every other state, because people, I met people. Funny in, enough, it just feels like Alabama is the place where most kids smoke. Yeah, yeah. That's part why they made it nineteen because they were like, we got a giant problem. <laughs> yeah, we got to try to lock yeah, this because, down. Yeah, because we got. But gambling is illegal in Alabama. No lottery, but they have the dog track there. I've already talked about this. The guy named Butch that was there helping people mm-hmm. pick Pit. numbers. That's the kind of guy I'm talking about. That like, if he put that effort into like a career, he would have probably done something great. Yeah. But he was probably 15 teeth away from that. You know what I mean? He needed... <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, like, this is the only job he could have. Yeah. Right. I, it, well, it's, it's you know, I think I've talked about that girl. That girl that was like, a, could have been an Olympic star, then she became a big drug lord. Like, it's like someone that's like got greatness in them. It's just a matter of where they're going to right. use it. And if they, you know, they... And, and uh, I would think greatness is about obsession. And so obsession is like, you got to obsess... And you got to be kind of like obsessed enough that you never get tired of obsessing over it. And then that's where you then, because that's where it's the 10,000 hour, that kind of idea. 
you got to do something that you would be like willing to do. So, I mean, they 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 probably have the mentality or they have the drive mm-hmm. to go do that. But like this dude's just into like, uh, you know, he's he can't let other vices get out. The other stuff gets in the way or yeah, whatever it is, and then he becomes just obsessed with the dog truck. Thinks about it probably all day. You think yeah. you need to be yeah. competitive too? You think that plays a role in it? Uh, I mean, it, but you do, but it's like it's like different. Like, because in comedy, we could be we be we're competitive. I've been very competitive, and you do it. I think you do it kind of quietly. You do it in your own head, uh, and you're like, well, even though it's like a subjective, there's no really rhyme or reason to it. But you just see someone. Someone gets something, you think I should be getting that. And you're like, well, then I've, you know, but I would take it as like, well, I got to work harder to make sure that I cannot be denied that because I'm like, I've built my status up so much. And, you know, whether at the beginning it was like, that's what I would do. And so it's like, I don't, it's not like, you know, it's a good, uh, my buddy Doug said what's, uh, which is a great thing. You don't need someone to lose for you to win. Like, yes. so it's like competitiveness is, I know, like in the, in sports you do but in right. in in general to get where you need to go you don't need that person to go down for you to go up it's not a zero sum game yeah. yeah it's like i don't know yeah is like, that what that means exactly yeah. Oh. Yeah. it's like uh yeah so you just and but that's how you got to think of it you got to think i don't i like gosh i wish that person didn't get that and so like i wish something would happen to them mm-hmm. so they don't get it that's a horrible way to think right. cuz now you're even rooting for someone else well, the only thing you can control is you. So you need to go, well, I need to get up so I, then they can't even, like, deny me. Like, I can go stand there eye to eye with them, and they go, like, yeah, you're supposed to be here too because right. you've done – maybe I had to do more work than that person did. That's just what happens, and that extra work pays off. Like, even featuring in clubs. I remember featuring, and people would come up to me sometimes, and they would go, oh, man, you should have been the headliner. You And it's like, well, the headliner is not – keeping me it's not like they were like oh it's either that guy or this guy and Mm -hmm. you know it's like you know they put in the work they're there i'm happy to be where i'm at but it's like they would go oh you and they act like they're keeping me from doing it yeah yeah i think yeah and it's like people trying to be nice trying to say something like it's like but yeah the headliners do an hour like you have there's a a lot of different options the middle spot is usually the best spot because it's like there's no nothing to deal with the sweet spots to it's uh kind of a perfect kind of thing uh yeah but it's yeah it's like yeah you don't have, someone doesn't have to go down i i mean i i, I took that to heart with, and then will, you hear him go to the host and be like hey you should be the feature yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you go golly dude what and the headliner was headliner he goes you should be in theaters <laughs> yeah, yeah he goes i mean this guy's just building yeah, people he built, yeah. Like he's tearing You're people like, down this guy's awesome yeah dude. yeah like what about people in the audience oh they should have been the host <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> he goes everybody did great <laughs> Well, I was going to say, you do a great job of striving for greatness. You are a great comedian and a great golfer because you really put in the work into it. You're a lot, you're below average in a lot of things, but yeah. the things you really focus on, you're really good. Well, you have, I have drive. Yeah. yeah. Drive is. But it's also a mentality too. Yeah. I, I mean, my, I strive for average. That's my problem. I, yeah. <laughs> when I'm on a showcase show, I'm not thinking I want to be the best. I'm off, usually thinking, I just don't want to be the worst guy on this show. Yeah. Everything in my life is just, I went to Middle Tennessee State. It has it in the name. Yeah. I'm not a college dropout. I didn't go to Notre Dame. Everything's just average. But you, it's a mentality that you yeah. do strive for greatness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah, you got to. You know, you got to have, like, you want all of these things. And then so you got to be like, well, how do I get them? I don't, it makes it easier, like, to almost to be like, this is how. And, like, it's like things that are, you know, like, I mean, they're kind of whatever. Like, it's like it could be some kind of, like, materialistic kind of things that you're like, I want this. Or maybe it's a status you want. Or it's, uh, you know, I want to be like, you know, I remember just wanting to be able to, not have to take an Uber at the airport. I wanted to be able to somehow get to a place where if I get off the plane, they have my name on it. Yeah. And it was like, just cause it was like, I've, you know, when you That's do a lot better when that happens. Yeah. Jake. It's like why, when you do years and years of like, where's the, you know, I'm either taking a cab or you gotta find the Uber thing. And there's everybody up there and like all this, and you're doing it every single week. Like you just little things that you're like, God, if I can get just a guy that's like all that stuff's done. 
yeah. then I just go to him and then I get in the car. And so like that would be, that's like one of the things. And so you're striving for like, well, I have to get to a level to do that. And now I could, it's like, you can go broke and lie to yourself that you can afford it. Or you got to get to a level where either someone's providing that for you or, or you can afford to go do it. And you just do little stuff like that. You're like, all right, now I'm there. And you know, if I get to that, then that answers a lot of questions on the other side too. So if I'm at that level, that means I'm higher up as a comic. So all the people I'm were competed with, maybe I'm past a few of them now, or I'm at least with the ones that were dry, you know, that you're like, we're like, God, how to get there. Yeah. And you put the goal, maybe not on the, it's, it's, it's like, it doesn't, and I still have a hard time. That's why I was talking to Doug, but I still have a hard time. I don't need to be putting stuff on. It's not about that other person. It's not about, you know, it's not about, you know, like stuff about the same, like not talking about all the, like, I mean, I, I don't think this counts as talking as. No, no. But it's like. Well, I don't know what you're about to say. Yeah. I go, we'll all right. Well, I don't think women should vote. <laughs> <laughs> so if, is that too much? No, no, I think, look, I think only women should vote. Uh, I don't know. I'll do whatever you want. You know. <laughs> Let's have dogs vote. They just get walk. We have two doors. They walk in one and, and whoever, whatever dog walks in the most gets in. And. They're, uh, no, but it's like they're, uh, what was I saying? You were about to tell us something that's the you secret don't think to comedy. Uh, <laughs> well, there, you yeah, know, I was about to say, so what was I about to say? I don't know. You were talking yeah. about, I really, well, I could say about, you Doug, about people. Yeah. You don't, I don't necessarily need people to come down and see me go up, but I, I know that you, you talked about this a bit, but it's like seeing people that are above you and then just on your own, yeah. suddenly you're like past them for whatever reason, is very satisfying. Now, it's not satisfying because they're not where you're at, but just to see your own progress, yeah. to be like, oh, I remember looking up to that person, yeah. mm-hmm. and now I feel like my career is better than that. Yeah, and, it and is, it, it's very satisfying. It feels good. It feels and it's good. not about them yeah. at all, but it's just a... And I think you should go tell them. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and but go, just... dude, I used to be so jealous of you, <laughs> and no, now you. when I look at you, and I know you could never even dream to be where I'm at, Yeah, that feels great. I mean, you know... Name some, name some names. And you give them $5, and you go, you probably need it. I don't know. And then but, you leave. Well, <laughs> you know, it's like, that's the thing. It's like, you can have those thoughts, but also... Feel sorry for that person. Also, be like, oh, I, I always thought they were so funny. I wish that their career was going better. It's, but it's all boils down to that person, and so right. it's like their career. Your career is even if you're in a subjective field like we are, where it's, it's you got to get an audience, and it's there's no like, well, this guy is the best, or this guy like there's no not it's not a sport where it's like he wins, they lose. Uh, it's it's that it's up to that person, and that person has to go do it, and. You know, I think we're both in the scenario like, uh, or like everybody. You don't, we don't, you don't grow up with anything that's like crazy that's going to f- send you forward. You got to really go earn everything, and right, you got to go get it all. And and that helped me see my parent. My parents went and earned everything. They went and got everything, and they, and then you s- just see that uh, aspect, and you got to go get it. And then that's all that matters. And when you yeah. realize too, when you do pass people, and then you realize like I don't really have a. It's not that I feel sad for them, but you don't have any emotion towards it. It's not like you're there like, I want them to know I passed. Like, right. You realize how stupid it was that mm-hmm. I let them, yeah. that I made that whatever in my head. Because right. I'm like, well, I don't care about it now. Why do I not care about it? Is it because I'm doing better? Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't really have any emotion towards it. And so you're like, all right. But I mean, you ne- I say all this saying you do need this stuff. To, that stuff is stuff that you can make up in your head mm-hmm. that like keeps you like you have your weird thing. I want my name on that when I get picked up. How do I make that happen? Like it's and I and I don't want to do it too soon. I don't want to do it too late. I want to do it when like and that's a it's a good way to do something that's not as like on someone. But I have a very hard time with doing. There, the other side. There also is uh, scenarios where, for me, like back in Charleston, I used to try to help people. Like they would ask me to help them write or whatever. I remember one guy in particular asked me to meet up with him and help him write. So I was working with him, and I was just trying to get him to clean it up a little bit. So he tried it clean a couple of times, and then one set he was like on stage, and they just like, 
he was like, oh, people always try to tell me to be clean all the time. I was, you know, and he's like, oh, but they don't have a late night. They're not on the Tonight Show. And I think about that guy sometimes, and I think, hmm, I wonder if he has seen what I'm up to lately. And yeah. that makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, I'm sure he has seen what you're up yeah. to. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's going to make you feel good. That's, it, there's nothing wrong with it. it yeah. I would, you know, you're, you got a little satisfaction of like, you know, yes. that, but that guy would have driven, that would have driven you to then do that stuff that that person, then you pass them. And then you just keep going and you're like, yeah, yeah but you, I mean, look, no one's perfect. Everybody, people need to accept that. Like you're going to have a feelings that you're like, yeah, dude, I love, like, I think of that guy and I'm like, I showed that guy and you're like, yeah, do you want that guy to be down? No, but you're like, I get excited that I did show, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause you're, cause none of us are perfect. So you're right. going to have these right. kind of things and you got to be like, all right, they're there. And you know that they're there. Yeah. But I had to, where I need to be like, if I want to go up, it's like, you can't. You can't hope someone goes down. I can think of it. It's not even. I can think of it with other comedians. It's not even comedians. It could be another person or another this or it could be someone you know and this and blah blah whatever. And then you're putting all this stuff out. You know, being like, well, there and people have it in regular life with social media. If you see people on Instagram and they post stuff and you see them post like, oh, they look like they're having this life. That's like, man, they're like family's awesome and all this kind of stuff. And then a lot of that's not real. Like they're going to, totally. like they're in fights, they're in whatever reason. And, and it's like, well, is it going to make you happy if you, you know, are you see that they get divorced later? And then you're like, you, if you can find yourself like, you feel not like mm. you feel good about yourself and you're like, well, that shouldn't be the case. Mm-hmm. And then you, but then you have to realize, you got to realize, yeah, this stuff's not real. Like they're, they're posting you the highlights. And that's coming from a place of insecurity on your own part, yeah, too, absolutely. probably, if you're looking at that other person going, I, yeah, I it hope shouldn't it falls be out down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you would, but, you, but of course you do, or you want to find, I mean, I, find, I want to find a weakness. I would always have that. Yeah. I'd always have it with, with comedy. Like, if there was other clean comics starting, I would be like, and if I found, and if they cursed on stage or were dirty, I would, I would feel satisfaction. Because then I would, I would know, like, I'm not competing with them anymore. And like, so then I would be able to, and I, you know, I don't know if I should have done that, but I like, I I shouldn't have done it, but it's like, I did. I thought that all the time. Like I would just catch someone that was clean and I'd be like, God, I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm competing with this person. I'm not going to physically do something to them. I'm not going to try to mess with their career. But the second I saw them show the weakness of this, I just was like, all right. Yeah. I, 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 I would, I would see that on it and make them. No. <laughs> I would see that in competitions. Like if I were in a stand-up competition, and then I, w- I would watch someone on stage, and I'd be like, "Oh man, I feel like it's me or that person." And then they would like do some weird religious joke or or political joke, and I would be like, "All right, I yeah. won. I just won." Because they just divided the audience with yeah. their, and I'd be like, "All right, they had them," yeah. and th- and then I would yeah. win. Yeah, and, uh, and that felt good. Yeah, and then so, you go talk to the judges about the moon landing, <laughs> yes. and then they're like, "God, we should have voted for that other guy." Yeah, you go, well, yeah, exactly. You go, yeah, I keep it all off stage. I don't yeah. put it out up there. Yeah, you know? yeah I keep it on a podcast, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they pulled Americans the biggest gambles in your life, and the three biggest were changing careers, getting married moving to a new city. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, would you say those are probably marriage wasn't the biggest gamble, but yeah. Uh, no, I mean, you know, Laura made me do it. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. And no, <laughs> no choice. No, Laura was, yeah. Laura's not a gamble. Uh, but you've talked about how you moved to LA. Well, you know what? Yeah, moving, moving from LA to here was the bigger gamble because at first you didn't even want people to know it. Yeah, yeah. That was probably the biggest one. Uh, moving to Chicago, New York. I mean, you're young and like it's like you say, so you kind of like you're dumb. I don't have a, I don't have a career. Uh, but yeah, moving from LA to Nashville was. And but that was a big motivation. Anytime you start feeling comfortable, it's time to make a change. You should always feel a little uncomfortable. Don't once you start feeling too comfortable, it's like you're just sitting in comfortableness and it's nice. And it will, the world is passing this. Every second you're comfortable, the world is passing you by. Someone's learning something that you're not learning. Someone's out doing something you're not doing. And I mean, there's going to be, I'm not saying everybody has to live in this state. If you're, it's what, if you're, if you're trying to get to some kind of thing, 
that's a big thing to think of. Like you just can't be anytime you start going like, I don't have to really do anything right now. You know, when I moved New York to LA, that was, that was one too though. Cause it was like moving out there. Cause then I started doing, I wasn't doing shows every night. And at first I was like, ah, oh, it's nice not to have to go up every night. You know, I went eight years of going on stage every night. And then it just felt, then I felt a panic of like, yeah, I'm just sitting, I'm like getting backwards. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm getting less funny. I'm getting like, you know, I'm not in the rhythm of it all. I need to be, you need to be in it. So I think about when you falling on the ground, if I got pushed to the ground right now, it's going to hurt. Like, but if I, but if I wrestled every day, I could still at 43 fall on the ground every day and feel okay. Cause I would be hitting the ground every day. Yeah. But when you don't hit the ground every day and you're like, I don't want to fall. Cause you're like, it's going to hurt. And so it's like that. You got to be in it and just like, baby, and just getting beat up every day and around it. And if you're not doing it, other people are, and they will pass you, and they will pass you by, and you'll be, you'll get so defeated that you're never gonna get to go catch them because it's gonna, you're, you're, you're just gonna be like, well, I mean, how, why did they get? Because they kept going, dude. You gotta keep. All you gotta do is keep going. Yeah, you have to. I mean, that was the hardest thing about COVID was like, for in that matter of like. We there's nowhere to perform, and it was yeah. like, oh man. I mean, I guess the other thing was that everybody had to stop. But yeah. it's also like you don't get better at comedy not doing it. What's but, the yeah. biggest gamble you, you've? Well, ever made? I think you know I'm not, not believing in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I uh, yeah, that's true. But uh, <laughs> I uh, you know I moved from my hometown to Charleston, South Carolina, when I was like 21 uh, for no reason really. I just wanted to move. And uh, lots of people that I grew up around were like, don't do that, man. What are you doing? But I just was like, needed a change. Yeah. So I made that move and then quitting my job that was a full-time job with benefits and all of these things and then selling my car. Yeah. Also, I didn't really know why I was doing that. And then moving from Charleston to Nashville to pursue comedy, uh, which seemed to make sense to no one. Yeah. Um, uh, all gambles. And then, you know, I got married too, which I do think getting married is a gamble to a degree because you're like uh, agreeing to to be intertwined with this person, hoping that they're just going to keep going along with the stuff you believe. And for my wife, that's difficult. You know what I mean? I got I throw some crazy stuff on her. And <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, I got to go along with this now. Yeah. Say so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, my, my wife has to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. That's the, probably the hardest thing for a uh, I was specifically probably our two wives, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's the yeah. I mean, eleven o'clock. I can just be like, here's all. I mean, last night I was like, I looked up dogs because I was like, I thought I kind of want. I was like, you know, I wouldn't mind taking. I and I've made fun of people taking dogs on the road. Like you think it's ridiculous, but then you you know, then I find my way where I think, well, it's okay if I do it because I'm an idiot and I lie. <laughs> and a hypocrite. And like I don't, you know, it's like cause you just, what are you doing taking this? You can't be taking. Then I'll, I'll just end up doing the thing. Well, I wish I could do that, and then I find a way to make it okay in my head. But uh, so uh, I'm sorry for everybody that's had a dog, and I've quietly, I've never said anything to anybody, but I've uh, in your head, in my head, I was mad that you had a dog <laughs> out, uh, and I don't even have a dog yet. But so let me see. Let me get one, then I'll say I apologize. Right now, I'm still mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll still be mad. I can still because I'm not. You think about getting a little like purse dog to take on the? No, road no, no. I, I just thought about getting like a dog for the like to have with us on the bus. You know, oh, it's like we're taking the bus everywhere, and like yeah. I was like, I just want like a little buddy that walks next to me. We got Holly. Holly's kind of Holly's here with everybody, and then I was like, just a little buddy that's just kind of with me and. I was looking at like basset hounds, like those are, you know, <laughs> fun. And I can't get too big. Like Nick has, like, if the dog's too big, it's a lot for Nick. Like, uh, oh, yeah. So then it's like I'm trying to get a balance of like, you know, it maybe, you know, it could be a bulldog, but you know, like, or something. I don't know. I just look, I go look at it, like adoption, like all this stuff. Basset hounds are super fun. And like, you know, that little thing just jumping in bed and bunk with me and just, you know, you're like, it's like kind of that. You got your little buddy. And so I was like, I went down a whole thing. And what I did before that was looked into if I should start learning how to do MMA. Those were my two <laughs> searches last night. And I get down a hole. I'm watching videos. I mean, I finally get off the dogs to go like, you got to wrap it up. You know, I'm just trying to watch a movie or something. 
And then I, then I start watching YouTube videos on which MMA I should do for <laughs> self-defense. And I'm like down this thing of like, do I want to go learn jujitsu? Like in theory, I want to learn it. Then I'm like, do it. And I woke up today, like, do I want to learn jujitsu? Like there's so much stuff I want to, like, I do want to, it's like, I want to go hunting. I want to learn how to hunt. I want to learn how to, you know, shoot a gun more. Like, it's like, I've never done like a ton of like proper, like, or whatever you're, you know, go learn stuff. And then it's like, I don't know. It fades away after a while. Yeah. So what I did is I got a dog. (laughs) That knows a little jujitsu <laughs> and has two guns. Yeah, and I was that's like, "That's the way to go." Yeah, if you can. Well, find the way that. to go is you get a German Shepherd. Oh, that's the way you go because that's the other one I thought. I was like, if I get a German Shepherd and you get them trained, I mean, that's better than a gun. This is what you you would have the protection to be a German Shepherd. That I mean, they're like so obedient. Uh, our get, our dome and pitcher looked at them. There's supposed to be a great yeah, you dog. You get a German yeah. Shepherd and a gun. That way you yeah. can shoot the person while the dog's attacking. Them. <laughs> Yeah. It's like your tiger trip. <laughs> it's like the tiger trip. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. hunt with them too? Uh, I don't know. If they want to go, I don't know how they, you got to ask them. <laughs> That's how smart they are. You go, you feeling it today? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I'm all right. There you go, do you need me? I go, yeah, I'm doing some quail hunting. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> quail hunting? No, I'm just doing fishing hunting. Yeah. Just but hunting fish. Pheasants. I yeah, think what dogs. you're talking about, though, with these gambles and moving to states, what happens is you move and you've, you know, you, you still have friends that you stay in contact with, but everyday people, you've lost them all. And so now, and that's even quitting drinking for me was like, you basically lose all your friends. Yeah. There's some that are still around. But it's like, so now your horizons are broadened because you're like, you have to find new friends. You have to find new things. You got to find people that, that want to hang out during the day and not right. go to bed at four. Who, people who actually want to remember the conversation yeah. they're having with you. Yeah, yeah. You're younger, but it was probably a gamble to give up a Notre Dame degree to do full time comedy. I didn't give up. I mean, yeah, yeah, I still well, have the degree. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're I right. know what you mean. Yeah, it was September of 2019. I saved up. I had just signed a contract to do some some dates with Chris. John Chris. And then, you know, a couple months later that all that went away and then COVID came a couple Why months later. How did that go away? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah, I was like five months into being a full time comic and I felt like it would it was a huge mistake. Yeah. Because nobody was doing comedy anywhere. Thankfully in the South we were back doing it pretty quick, but yeah, I definitely went through a period there. Where I was like, this was a gamble that did not pay off. But that was two years ago. Yeah. Crazy. But I remember yeah. seeing you at Bobby's Idol Hour the first time, open mic, being like, dang, this guy's good. Hey, thank yeah. you. I mean, yeah, you should have told him that night. That'd been nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I did. I think he did. He sent yeah, me a Facebook yeah. message. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It meant a lot. Because I would never say this to his face, but <laughs> that kid's got some. Yeah. <laughs> Bates was years was probably when you quit your job. I'd yeah, imagine. I mean, I yeah. had a full time job for twenty years almost, and I was a manager and quit at forty three to do stand up comedy. Well, I think so a, a gamble. even bigger gamble. <laughs> I mean, a, I mean a, you had a baby the most gamble. at fifty years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w- yeah, yeah. I mean, that's well, that's just happened. So now I'm getting nervous, right? Yeah. So we don't know how. Yeah, we don't know how that's going to pan out. He did yet. more of a parlay. Yeah, yeah. Where he's got. <laughs> Job, marriage, yeah. I did a three-team parlay. Right. Three-team yeah. parlay. And they go, all right, I think that, you go, yeah, that's common. You go, here's a catch. Deep in my 40s. <laughs> when I'm going to do all that. That would be the part. That's your odds of the parlay. So you did. You made it. That would be the bet yep. would be the odds. Because if you're like, all right, if you're 20 and you're like, I'm going to have a full-time job, married, and a kid, eh, I would, you ain't going to win any money if you're going to bet on that. Now. Quit my job at 43, get married at 57, <laughs> have a baby at 70. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I mean, the odds are through the roof. Yeah. You bet a dollar, they're going to give you $70 million. That's right. That's right. It's the biggest gamble. There I, you go. I remember I used to be obsessed with this video of Bill Burr talking on his podcast, and somebody writes in as like, I'm thinking of quitting my job teaching and being a full-time writer, and he just goes on this rant. And what he said was, even if you – if you follow a dream or whatever, even if you don't achieve that dream directly, you always end up somewhere better than you were before. Yeah. So I stuck to that. I listened to that all the time when I was 
struggling, you know, and then. Well, yeah, it's like even couple like. Couple years. How long have you done comedy? Five years? <laughs> not, I mean, not long enough to oh, reflect yeah. on it in this way. <laughs> yeah. But even. Just the least, beginning of your <laughs> hey, man, I remember way back. It goes way back <laughs> when, when I was just moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's still time. Yeah. But it's like even when I left my hometown, it's like if. I was like, if this doesn't work out, I just can go back. It's not like the door's closed. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. I never had. It. Yeah, I, all the jobs I had, I could go back to. Yeah, right. Well, that's why his is 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 pretty big. Yes, you were, absolutely. He was old, not promising. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a career you'd advanced in, right? Yeah, you'd worked your way up. Yeah, from right out of college till forty three. How long were you there? Almost twenty years. Wow. Yeah, and he went in there and goes, "I think I want to be in front of the camera." And they go, "Ooh," <laughs> <laughs> and now he's back to radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true some examples of guys who did bet on themselves and their company chick-fil-a when truett kathy decided they're not going to be open on sundays everybody said that's ridiculous that's one seventh of your business profit that you're not going to be having but what it did is kind of the opposite effect it gave people this cert sense of urgency that ah they're close we got to go get our chick-fil-a it kind of mm created an opposite uh, appeal to people to go do it. And it also conveyed a sense of caring community. People, whether they realize it or not, do like the fact they said that people have some morals. And Yeah, and also every employee is guaranteed one day off a week. Right. Yeah. And they know what day it is. So they, if you're friends with people that you work with, you can get together on Sunday. Mm -hmm. People like that they're not open on Sunday, but do you think... The amount of money they'd make if they were open on Sunday would offset the amount of people that would be upset that they opened on Sunday. No, I, I agree. I think it makes you stand out. Yeah. You your own thing. And you're always reminded because you know people go, I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A. And then you're like, ah, it's Sunday. And you forget. Like, I mean, I've had that a million times. Every Everybody's Sunday. had it. Mid yeah. So it's like, I, I think the the it's you're not even, you don't even count Chick-fil-A as in with McDonald's or these other ones mm. like you count them it's its own separate kind of thing you know if you're going to go get fast food you would say i'm gonna get fast food you, you and i feel like you're like i'm gonna go get chick-fil-a you say where you're going yeah versus yeah. i mean you can say you're running mcdonald's but it's like i feel like chick-fil-a is like uh, looked yeah uh, it's its own category it's looked gracefully at like it's yeah, like yeah. you go bring chick-fil-a in uh and you're working in an office, people are like, oh, I should have got Chick-fil-A. Yeah. You bring in McDonald's, I mean, they're like... Uh, you show yeah. up with Hardee's biscuits? They're like, Mike, yeah, God, they're you know, like, your golly, truck break down? Yeah. I don't know. What are you <laughs> doing? You doing here. the some construction? Are we doing construction today? I've like, never gotten Chick-fil-A and been like, oh, this is not that good today. Yeah. But I have gotten Hardee's the other day and been like, what's going on here? <laughs> I look, There was a Hardee's by my trailer park growing up, and I used to eat... <laughs> we used to eat there like... I don't know, four times a week. Yeah. I had Hardee's the other day. I was like, oh, man. I was like, this is disgusting, and I still kept eating it. Well, Hart, yeah. Hardee's, Carl's Jr., Hardee's. But, like, the Hardee's is, uh, I think they had their heyday. I think it was, they, they were. They got a hot breakfast. They got and, a good breakfast. They got a good breakfast. They're good, yeah, go to their breakfast yeah. then after that. I think the Thick Burgers are still doing well, man. You remember yeah. when they came out? Yeah, it was a, it was a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, in the Weber that. household at least. It, no, it was, it was a big deal on. here. Yeah. I used to get a monster burger down at the oh, Hardee's. Oh yeah, Hardee's did chicken mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. That was a good run. You and remember that? They had a low carb version of every burger you could yeah, get. Yeah, that was a, the low carb thing they came out. Just the big, lettuce, the lettuce. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they still probably have that. I think so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Elon Musk, when he started Tesla, it was the first real american new car company in 50 years and in 2008 when the u.s economy tanked he was basically out of money which is hard to think about now but uh he had 35 million left in cash which i know that seems weird to say out of money but he invested Must have been tough for him was he, on the, was he on the street he invested it all in his own company in tesla just to keep him afloat and wow. now now that company's worth a trillion dollars wow. that's crazy that's crazy it is that is a, that's a giant gamble too because you think you only have thirty five million so it's like easy to be like well I'm gonna keep it out. and then he's like no no, no I'll I'll keep playing maybe on invest thirty four yeah <laughs> keep a mill yeah you would think yeah yeah just to be like you know just go to Hardee's yeah 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 Fritz, hey, I want to be able to get a low carb burger once in a yeah. while Fred Smith founder of uh, uh, FedEx he went to Yale and wrote a business uh, paper on better ways to move. Uh, 
packages. And they said, there's no way this will work. They gave him a C in the class for it. But he went ahead and started his own business anyway. And they were down to $5,000 in the company. Now, this is 1971. He went to Vegas, gambled it, and made $27,000. So he came home with 32000 It was just enough to keep the company afloat. Oh, wow. And now, of course, they're a multi million dollar yeah billion you think dollar in college they were like you're did you what did you plagiarize the post office <laughs> yeah it was like i would say <laughs> well it, if they didn't think it'd work he must have done something better than yeah, the post yeah. Office. anybody that's like wants to have some idea or something or someone's going to tell you like i don't know if that's going to work that idea is going to when someone just says i don't know if it's going to work just go you got to just try it like you got to just see unless it's unless it's shown to your face that it's not going to work Cause it's, that's a, we were talking about like, even like dieting and stuff like that. You know, there's always like, you're like, well, I'm thinking about doing this. You're like, yeah, but you don't want to, if you go do that, then it's going to, there's always like, going to be a that. Go just yeah. do it, dude. Like yeah. go, you know, if you were like, I want to lose weight eating Oreo cookies, which you could, you could eat Oreo cookies only. Vegan. Huh? It's vegan. It's vegan. <laughs> so it's, you could eat Oreo, like it's your only meal. And you did a calorie count. You're like, I want eat this many Oreo cookies. You would lose. You could lose some weight. You'd feel terrible. Blah blah whatever. But that works. You can do it. Not saying it's the best way to do, but like it. That's how, so if you told someone I'm gonna do that, they would tell you why you can't. And you, you just gotta be like, just do it, and then you will learn why you can't. Yeah. And then once you learn why you can't, you will then go. I know. For me, I felt terrible eating Oreos. You know, but I lost 15 pounds. So then I just put it together and was like, all right, well, don't eat Oreos now. You make it real food. Mm-hmm. And then they're blah, blah, whatever. But everybody starts with, everybody wants to give a, a everyone wants to say, no, 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 don't, you can't do that. That's going to be. Yeah. People love to be like, don't do the out of the main. Yeah. Uh, out of the lines. Don't. Yeah. That Fred Smith one's exactly that. Yeah. They go, it's a C. Cause you're like, that's nah, ridiculous. You're like, well, that guy just doesn't want to think about it. Because it's clearly not. But if the professor wanted to like have the conversation and talk about it, he probably could have been talked into it. What if like the, just the grammar was terrible and everything was misspelled? <laughs> yeah. That's why he got a C. He writes with his fist and <laughs> yeah. he's just like... It's actually a great idea, but I can't read anything. I he would wrote. call it Fed E-X. <laughs> and he goes, why would you put just put X? God, it's stupid. My, I had a boss. He used to go, keep doing what you're doing, keep getting what you're getting, right? And, and so I always thought about that. And it's like, if you don't like what you're getting... You got to switch it up, right? So when I wanted to quit the pesticide job, people were like, don't do it. I would not do it in this economy. That's what everybody always says. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm terribly unhappy. Yeah. But they wanted me to keep it because it, it was... Uh, Safe. There was money. In it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, I hate this. It's the same w- story as Elon, just a little different yeah, setting. Yeah, I mean, I had, you know, maybe uh, $35. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that there's people that are... I'm gonna quit pesticide. Come on, man! You can't. <laughs> don't throw your life away. Like right, that. right. Right. But I had health insurance, yeah, a car yeah, allowance, yeah, yeah, a salary, yeah, yeah. and it was yeah. like, but I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Hollywood, the most famous story is Sylvester Stallone when he wrote Rocky. Um, he had a hundred six dollars left to his name, and he optioned it to the studio, but he insisted he had to play Rocky, and they're like, no, we don't want it. They were gonna give him all this money. But he held his ground, and he had to sell his dog. That's how much. Oh my god! Yeah. His dog Butkus. He had to sell forty dollars just to have food to uh, eat. I would have bought it for the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I would have sold the, sold the dog first. <laughs> you you <laughs> hate dogs. The first thing I'd have done. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so he turned down a lot of money to get to play the role. But he said, he said, you know what? I've got this poverty thing down. I really don't need much to live on. I've sort of figured it out. So if I sell this script and it goes great, I'll never forgive myself. So he stuck to his guns, wow. and he took less money, but he had enough to buy his dog back. The guy charged him $15,000 to get his dog back. No way. Because he knew how much he wanted it. But he Should've did it, and of course... Should have definitely bought that dog. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look, look yeah. at what it did for him, Rocky. That's crazy. Obviously mm-hmm. changed his life. Now, he kind of stole that story. I mean, he didn't steal it, but... He got the idea from a professional boxer who went 15 rounds with against Muhammad Ali. He mm-hmm. was a nobody. He knocked Muhammad Ali down, just like the setting for the first Rocky. Yeah. Right. Went the distance. and came home, wrote the screenplay in like three days. Wow. And That's crazy. And optioned it. Yeah. 
Swingers, the same thing. John Favreau wanted to put his buddies in Swingers. John Favreau was an out of work actor in Hollywood, and they're like, uh, "We want this. We want Johnny Depp. We want Chris O'Donnell to play these characters, and they're they're going to give him like eight million dollars to do it." Yeah. And he's like, "I want my buddies Vince and Ron Livingston." Um, and so they turned down like eight million dollars. They finally got two hundred eighty thousand dollars to make the movie. Wow. And of course. That was a huge cult favorite. Right. That would have been Vaughn's, such a great movie yeah. with Johnny Depp. Phil, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that would have been awesome with him. <laughs> Phil, uh, yeah. I mean, Phil Rosenthal, when they did Raymond, he was they didn't want him to be the showrunner, and he was like, "Well, I'll just quit the show." Wow. And then he held his ground. Everybody loves Raymond, and they put all that purple yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, you know, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Frank Darabont. I is thought there, you were saying there, Rain Man, but you said yeah. it like real fast. Yeah. Rain Man. Is there uh, <laughs> a few more of these? A couple more here. Um, Matthew McConaughey. It's hard to remember. He used to just be a romantic comedy guy. He did all these romantic comedies, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Fool's Gold, Wedding Planner. He didn't want to be just a comedic actor. That was when he was my favorite. Well, mm. I really did like him a lot I liked as him a too. rom-com guy. He turned down fourteen and a half million to do another rom com because he wanted to be a serious actor, and then he took twenty minutes off twenty minutes twenty months off from doing movies. Just and then every, when he came back, everybody's like, "Oh, where's Matthew McConaughey been? He's up to something." And all of a sudden, he had this new kind of like mystique, like, yeah. "What's he been up to?" And then he got in Lincoln Lawyer. And Lincoln Lawyer was, was great. The yeah. McConaughey wasn't that what it was called? Yeah, it was. Called, I never heard that, but they said it was the reconnaissance. I oh, never yeah. heard that term. You ever yeah. see the paper boy with him? He gambled on. He really gambled on himself. Yes, he did. He turned down. He goes, "I'm not going to take this 14 million dollars." <laughs> and he was like, "That." I mean, he did get like, but it's funny to me. That's the gamble. He like because he's already super rich. He's super rich and famous, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, you know what? I'm going to take a gamble on myself. I'm going to take 20 months off. I mean, I only have 20 million dollars, but I'll take, <laughs> I'll take a. I'll a see month off for it. every million. Yeah. yeah, I own, and they're like, we'll give you fourteen million. You're like, I'm gonna yeah. go live like royalty for two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> at a resort. Um, well, you'll really love this one, man. Tom Cruise. Um, I love Tom Cruise. They I did, like Matthew McConaughey. Too. I'm a big fan of both. In Mission mm-hmm. Impossible: Ghost Protocol, they did not want him to do his own stunt where he scaled the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. But he insisted doing his own stunt because he would say that it would make the movie better. And the film's insurance company would not insurance. I mean, uh, give him a policy, I guess. What's the word? Insure. 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 There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, but he did anyway. That was the gamble. If he fell, they would have, that movie would have been delayed. <laughs> yeah, and he would have died. The cool. Burj Khalifa is too tall. I don't like looking at it. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, it's so you, much taller than the you next know. One building. of these buildings is the Empire State Building. Is that right? No, oh, okay. it, might be. <laughs> it might be. It might be the Batman Tower in Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It, it dwarfs our tallest. Building. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's yeah. the little one might be that height of. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I bet the Empire State Building. Yeah, you can put it right next to each other, and then, uh, but it. Like and people live up there. Yeah, I mean, okay, so that's. I mean, that's it's about twice taller, as though. about twice as tall. It's still very big. It starts getting like they start. I feel like some of these tall building when they start doing this, they're like put a pencil on the top of you, like all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, is this even? What are we doing? You yeah, know, they get like it gets so like pointy, and they're like, ah, eh, <laughs> we got like five points on top of each other, and you're like, I guess it's the tall, and you get to tell people. They go, what? I mean, I live in the tallest building in the world. Wow. What floor are you on? Third. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But it got points, yeah. so it's the tallest. I'll give a couple more. Uh, there's a couple of golf ones. Let's do we'll... some big ones, yeah. Let's talk about the more gambles of just highly successful people. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess just... Uh, when Roy McElroy was just 15 years old, his father bet 400 pounds, which I looked up, it's about $450, on 501 odds that Rory would win the Open Championship by the age of 26. And when he did it, he made $341,000. That's pretty cool. That's good. Betting on your son. Yeah, like that's that. fun. I'd yeah. like to hear about some that didn't work out. 
Yeah, like those were harder to find. Like if there were like Jim from accounting quit his job to pursue acting and now he's the janitor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's got to be uh, there's a million of those. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there's some at this table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll end on this one and I'll ask you, Nate, if you think you could do this. So this guy, he's a professional poker player, but he just loves to gamble and he loves to play golf. So what do you shoot in golf in general? Uh, Depends on the course. Like I've, I've been, I'm stuck in like 81, 83. This guy shoots an average between 82 to 84. He's exactly me. All right. He's exactly you. So he bet his buddies $340,000 <laughs> that um, he could play four rounds of golf in one day in 100 plus degree Las Vegas heat, carrying his own clubs, playing from the tips, and he had to break 100 each time. You think you could do that? Uh, comes out to walking over twenty miles. Yeah, I think I could. I think I could. I, I think I could do it. You throwing that? I mean, I've played in that heat, in the heat before. I honestly think I could do that. I mean, it would be a matter of just all I'd be worried about is the time. But if you, you know, I mean, I'm not going to run. But if you go play and you're, you don't have to wait on anybody and like you have to. Uh, yeah, I don't think time was a factor in it. Yeah, well, you gotta do it in one day. Well, I guess you that's gotta true. Do, yeah, three hours. So it's like you know, that's six. It's twelve hours. So you gotta have it. You know, you gotta do this at the time where it's gonna be. You'd have to start like right when sunrise. Mm-hmm. How much could he make? Well, he bet three hundred forty thousand dollars. So that's what he makes with his buddies. Okay. Well, so you got four. Yeah. So if you say each round takes you four hours, you know that's sixteen out right. 16 yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you'd have to be, you'd have to tee off at 6 a.m. and the sun sets at, you get, if it's a late day, 8 p.m., then I guess you're not really worried about the time. I think yeah, I they didn't mention it. the time. They just mentioned the extreme heat and carrying his own clubs and walking that and playing well. I say throw in, he's not allowed water. I'll take the bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think I could do it. Yeah, he did it. He yeah. got. The first two rounds he did pretty quickly. Third, he started slowing down. The fourth one, it was getting risky. But when there was five or six holes left, he let some of his buddies buy their way out. That's what they do. You yeah. Know, if they know you're going to win, they'll let you buy your way mm-hmm. out. But then one guy had to cover, like, the rest of it that was left. So, But he did it. He made $340,000. Wow. Yeah. I think I, I think I could do it. I, so I that's think- the next – Challenge, Chris the next King challenge. challenge. <laughs> I'd go. I mean, I could go up to. Uh, yeah, I could go. I could go try it. I'd do it. I could. I, I'd like to try it. I'm not. I've played 36, and uh, I know it's four, and it's 100 degrees. But I played in 100 degrees. I hit. I I hit a lot of golf balls. I can play. You hit better in the heat, right? Then the ball travel uh, better. Usually travels farther. Karen, yeah. look, it gets you. Would be you definitely are. You're super tired. I've been walking a lot now, carrying my clubs. Yeah. I won't be able to cover 340 grand probably, mm-hmm. but I'll throw in a little bit. Yeah. 20 bucks. Okay. Something like that. Okay. We're starting off to something. <laughs> Do a GoFundMe with, uh, <laughs> with the, and then I'll be in the gambling stories. And they took a big risk on himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he raised the money. He raised the money. He goes, uh, all right. Is that it? Yeah, it seemed like a good place to stop. I thought that might have a little bit more heat to that story, but yeah, yeah, but it's pretty hot. It's pretty, yeah, it's hundred degree degrees. weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think bad. it was hot. Uh, I don't know if you think we'll spiral off into another pod- part two <laughs> podcast of. <laughs> no, I mean I got a lot more, but I feel like we should probably stop. Ben Affleck, big gambler, got caught card counting. Well, dude, the, what is those stories are fun? Is huh? these are like they got caught? <laughs> Did he go to jail? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sorry that that. That these other stories were not fun, but he got caught card counting. The black, the Hard Rock made him leave. He was won, won eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, but I still don't understand why. How can it be illegal to be? It's not illegal, but they don't. He just said they don't like it when you start winning that way. And it just stealing. seems crazy to me. That seems like well, it's rigged against you, you know. So when you start winning, they want to get you out of there. Yeah, but it's it's I guess yeah, I don't know. It does seem like if you're that good It seems unfair. And uh I read kinda how he did it. It's it's cause I didn't know how card candy worked, but basically you assess a number a, either a plus one or a minus one. Mm-hmm. You know how that yeah to the good cards back and you just keep up with it in your head and then once you feel like it's in your advantage you start betting more money. Mm-hmm. And then there's some that are teams where 
you have people standing around that kind of keep up with you and they signal. I could see that. Being a little bit more illegal. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Yeah. There's a guy named Phil Ivey. He's a, known as the best poker player in the world. He's won 10 World Series of Poker bracelets and over $100 million. Yeah. And he did a uh, te- technique called edge sorting. And that's basically where you can look at the back of the cards and see if they're cut slightly different, the shapes of them. And he would ask, uh, you know, he would get a good look at them. And then when they flipped them over, he would remember which ones had a certain edge, certain way. And then he could remember it, and he started winning money that way. And he got sued. Uh, they took him to court about it because they said it was illegal. To do and then and so, and he, he won, like, he won all of poker because of that? I don't know if he did it in the World Series of Poker, yeah. but he has played professionally where he does edge sorting, where they can look at a face-down card and tell if it's a good card or a bad card because they look at the differences of the back of the card. I love that I it's mean, illegal to have a good yeah. memory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's like this is the this is the part with like cards. I think people get frustrated. Like it's you do that with, with like poker. And someone if someone's like, "Well, you're not playing the way," and I like they want to play it some way. They lose, and then they're mad that you know, like it's like, "Well, you're not playing it the way I think you should play it." And you're like, "Well, what are we doing then?" Yeah. If I if I gotta play it like how, you know, you're like. We play when we play poker like on the bus. It's like yeah, it's a zoo. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of all ins. There's a lot of it's kind of chaotic, and that's the game that's being played. Not everybody, you know, we've gotten better at, at it, but it's like it doesn't go the way you want it to go. And so, if you're a good poker player, you'd probably be pretty frustrated. But then you'd be like, then why are you? Then go, then get out of our circle. Like yeah, it's like yeah. you can't, you can't be mad at like because someone's not doing something the way you want them to do it. And but the same way with casinos, you can't get mad if a guy can remember the back of the cards. Yeah, that's impressive. And then remember what it is. You're like, he's not using any, you know, he's not writing anything down. It's like his memory. It's like, how could you even prove it? You know? Yeah, he would ask the dealer to kind of rotate it around so he could see it better. Tell him, like, he's superstitious. And and most dealers, from what I read, will basically go along with whatever you ask. Mm-hmm to try to help you out. So the de- dealers would do it. He's just getting a better look at the back of the car. Yeah, can you flip it over for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just real quick. Yeah. Just real quick. Flip it over. So, yeah. I mean, I agree. It seems if yeah. you're that good, you deserve yeah. it. But yeah. but he's doing pretty well. He's doing good. He's doing all right. Yeah. Phil Ivey. Yeah. All, right. all right. I'm glad we got back into it. And <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Amazing. Ridley was suspended by the NFL for betting on football, including yeah. his own team. Mm. That was this year. Mm. Mm. All right. That's it, Pete Rose. <laughs> Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Uh, all right. We're good. We feel good. I where, feel great. Where feel you great. at this week? Yeah. Uh, this week I uh, am Vegas, Las mm. Vegas. Mm. Speaking of gambling, wow. Yeah, yeah. How about that? How about that? I'll be in Las Vegas. Go do a little edge uh, sorting. A little edge sorting. Going to count cards. Playing a lot of that stuff this week. Uh, I don't know how to do it, but I'll read a, I'll watch a YouTube video. <laughs> All the way up. Yeah, I'll just be <laughs> sitting there at the deck going, one. Plus, Counting out loud. Plus two, plus three, <laughs> zero, four. All everybody, everybody be quiet. All, and, all yeah. Goo! It's sort of goes, let me see that card. And look at it go, that's stupid. Queen of Diamonds always. I got to remember, half of it's cut off. <laughs> Yeah, I would forget that much. God, which one was half cut off? It had the hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, all right, then. All right, AC Diamond has a hole in it. <laughs> Next. They put a hole in them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's where I'll be. There and then Phoenix. Uh, yeah, I got I got there. Then uh, California run, uh, Thousand Oaks, Long Beach, uh, San Francisco. Then Phoenix for the special. Uh, be out there. Uh, we're doing... And the New Mexico running up to that. Two shows on Friday. And then there's tickets for the late show on that Friday night. Uh, two warm-up shows. And then I will be taping the two Saturday shows. Uh, so come out to that. That next week, Lexington. Uh, Greg Ward um, directing and producing Greg Warren's special at the Comedy Off-Broadway. Uh, October 1st is the night we are taping. Saturday, I think he's there that uh, whole weekend. Uh, but come out to that. It'd be great. We'd love to have you. Uh, come If you can come, uh, support us doing that. We'd be appreciated. I'm in uh, Portland, Oregon this Friday, mm-hmm. doing a private show for some folks. 
Mm, hope it's comedy, but who knows? We'll see. <laughs> it is Portland. So. Yeah. <laughs> date night. Uh, no, it's not date night this time. It could be. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, that's Friday. And then uh, Sunday, I'm in Paducah, Kentucky with uh, Leanne Morgan. No. Oh, that'll be fun. Big week for me. Sunday night, Zany's Comedy Club. I'm headlining there. That's exciting. All and right. then Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm in Naples, Florida. All right. Where I've never been. Off the Hook Comedy Club. And then Thursday night, Tampa, Side Splitters Comedy Club. Come on out. All right. I'll be, as this podcast is coming out, I'll be tonight at Zany's in Nashville. This weekend, Jacksonville Comedy Zone. Uh, all going to be great. I want to say I had a great weekend in Greensboro, North Carolina. I had gone there in 2016, and I did not have a good time. And I've been talking trash about the club since then. But I want to say it was a complete turnaround. Love the club. And thanks to everyone that watched and shared my 5 O'Clock Somewhere video. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I got a lot of... Yeah, did really yeah. well. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, it. Alan Jackson, um, Trace Adkins, Jeff Foxworthy, Larry wow. the Cable Guy, lots of John Chris, Leanne Morgan, they all shared it for me. Very nice. There are lots of people I forgot, but yeah. it was I, really I shared great. it. Aaron shared it. <laughs> and, I, did, I did not uh, share it. I didn't either. So it's still time. And, I, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a, after Labor Day. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> I don't know how much time we have left. That's the rule. Don't share Dusty yeah, after Labor Day. Don't share Dusty yeah. after Labor Day. That is what they say. Yeah. 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 All right, well, go check that out. Thank you all, as always. We love you, and we'll see you uh, next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.